All right. I like that. So did you get to open that uh, GIF that I sent you? Or is it a GIF? What do they call it? What? Which one? You send so much stuff one, now. No. You're the, you're the annoying guy. You know that. <laughs> no. Not, yeah. not by, by far I am not. When you send all that Instagram stuff, th- those are mostly stupid. Just so oh, you know that. Man. I'm telling you right now, they're just, they're just mostly stupid. You told me one time, if you see something that you Say think. Say <laughs> <laughs> We're not in school right Wait, now, man. No, you said if, if you got something, just th- 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 what Ted and I do is we just fucking text each other. And then it's on the text. And if it's something interesting, we could go back to it. We could find it. We could, we, we, we could talk about it. Do I sound like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> find it. Find it. I have to stop doing bag of dicks. Bag of dicks. <laughs> no, but you, you said you said if I ever, if, if you stumble across, across something, just text it to us. So I'm just doing that blindly. Yeah, but I, I all the Instagram stuff. I don't. I mean, you when, can't open it, or I can open it all. I just I don't find it funny. Okay, is it I'll is stop. it just me? Am I the am I the guy that can't like like doesn't like looking at all this stuff? No, I mean to keep doing it. I checked it out. But I'm gonna when I when I say I see it all, I'm kind of lying. I, I saw I saw everything you I see everything you send. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm mildly amused by it. Yeah. I thought the George Carlin one was pretty good. It was topical. No, the George Carlin one was really good. I'm gonna. You just said man, everything you know I what? send you. Is Ted, not... when we do when we do video, when we do video, it, it's just gonna be the facial. People are gonna be like, "That's it. Matt's getting up and he's kicking the shit out of Ted." That's what they're gonna say. No, not again. If we get video, we're gonna make it into a cartoon. That can you do that? Be, yeah, you can take our entire show and animate it. Haven't you ever seen those shows? No, I haven't. So the real oh, life. I've seen those shows. No, yeah, there's, I've seen those there's, shows yeah. well, there's a couple of different. Um, shows the the best one that i've seen so what they'll do is they'll be in this case celebrities will record a bit okay and then they'll replay all the um audio to like uh, puppets it's called um prank yankers yeah yank, yank prank you say crank crank yankers crank, crank, <laughs> crank yankers is it crank? Yeah, but that's puppets you're talking about like actually well, like wait, wait, wait what about I mean, what about Mar- what about marion marionettes those things creep me out. Those things are so <laughs> weird. Why? Why? Why were marionettes a thing? I don't They're understand. Probably a, fr- probably a French thing. Well, I mean, know that you know there's probably a phobia for that, right? People no, I mean, are afraid of actually, those I like I like oh, marionettes. Hell. I mean, it's kind of cool because you got the puppet because a person's hand goes into the puppet and there's the puppet, but the marionette is like on a string, which seems like it's more skillful to oh, control hell a marionette. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I mean, because you're like they're doing this and they're doing this, and you know it's. Like, yeah. That's like from the movie. Um, you mean it's it's easier You're getting Sarah Marshall. <laughs> he did that with the vampire oh. thing, right? <laughs> so it's, it's or not... weekend, at, weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, so you, so you're saying lesson. stuffing your hand, stuffing your hand in Kermit the the, the frog's ass is, is less uh, is less talent. Uh, it takes less hey, talent. Piggy. I mean, it's skillful, but I mean, a marionette hey, is is more skillful because I mean, you're from a, you're controlling the 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 puppet from a distance yeah. with very precise and nuanced movements. Nuanced. So I mean. I'm very, you know, it's very impressive. So, God, you are so, you know what? As you get more drunk, when you start out sober, you, you, a very, <laughs> you're very impressive with your words. As, as you get more drunk, your, your words, your words become more like, and then a fart. You just say, everything's a fart. No, I think he gets, um, why did I, I don't cancel know. my appointment? <laughs> no, wait a minute. If we do, if we, so we can turn our show, we can make a video of it, turn our show into a cartoon. Does it take any editing? Of course. And we're not. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. No, what I'm suggesting is that we take, a, ben, we take a show that's already been recorded and have like an a- animator listen to it and create car- and animate the entire show, like create something based on our audio. Oh, be fucking wow. hilarious. And they're going to do it for free. Like you could they be, are? Like you could be talking and, you know, you're like just as you're talking, doing something crazy, just like in that, that show I was telling you, but it was with puppets. With yeah. puppets. No, I, I saw that. Yeah. I, I, I That was pretty funny. They, yeah, they used to make crank phone calls. Yeah. yeah you know, crank every, phone you calls. You know, every time someone says the word puppet, I always think of that song, Master of Puppets by Metallica. Pulling your strings. Yeah, it's I, about, I, it's I, about I always cocaine. Think that song. It's about yeah. cocaine. Is it really? Yeah. It's they a, seem like they're very It's angry. not about puppets? They're very angry no. in that song. Cocaine <laughs> is the ma- master of puppets. See, I don't... Controls re- your life. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I think almost all songs are about cocaine. And now they think about it, cocaine. But Cocaine Bear is not about songs. Cocaine well, the Bear. Song, the <laughs> song by... Uh, Who wouldn't sing? It's, yeah. it's gotta, we should make a song. We should make a Cocaine Bear song. Yeah. I've yet to see that movie. I don't know what the premise yeah, is. Okay. Not, yeah. I, I don't see movies, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I, tr- I tried to see something that's like two or two years old. I tried to find it on the TV. <laughs> I, I couldn't even... It's, it's not even anything I can watch. I'm just like, you know what? Nobody wants me to see this. Then 
then fuck yeah. him. I'm not going to watch it. But you know, we, we were talking about prank calls. You know, that doesn't exist anymore. Prank phone calls. No, you can't remember that it. used to be a thing. Yeah. No, I remember some of the, we the, used to do it the high, no, the, the, some of the highest ranked DJs in the country. I remember like it was all prank calls. Man cow. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Call. I don't know. Yeah, 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 but they would. Yeah, yeah, but they did the prank calls. Yeah. And, but it was like elaborate. It wasn't like you know, is your refrigerator running? Go catch it type of thing. It was like you know, very involved. Yeah. You know, and it, you, know, it, you know, it was like mildly amusing for like five minutes, and then. But actually, I think the was it the Beastie Boys had like an ongoing prank call thing. It was actually pretty funny. The Beastie Boys, they they did like a whole prank call what? set. The Beastie, not, not the Beastie Boys, but uh, no. the Jerky Boys, jerky, the Jerky, jerky boys, boys, the Jerky <laughs> Boys. Yeah, yeah, dude, that shit yeah. was funny. that was funny. That yeah. I'm not kidding you. I tell my wife hey, that. Jerky. Yeah. Yeah, Frank Rizzo. Yeah, Frank Rizzo. Yeah, he goes. I'm coming with my R I Z Z O. He goes. I'm coming with my fucking yeah. tools. <laughs> he, goes, he goes. Hey, you can't talk to me that way, guy. <laughs> he's, he's gonna, he's oh my god, I love that. Yeah. All right, so, sizzle chest. So here, here, I want to know something. What I, I've been, I've been looking at this, and there's a lot of news things in here. How can you be a squatter? California. But but it's crazy. I don't understand. No, I, crazy. I just you know I just read about the topic. I knew about squatters for years, but actually I, I guess it's so rampant now. And I guess like once you you know once you go on Google and look at a news story, you always get like the same type of story because I think they have that algorithm where they they send you the same story. So so you heard about you know I guess squatters apparently have actually more rights than the actual homeowner. Like you have no, to, it's you, state to state, you, you, but you have to serve them a ten day eviction notice. You have to go Wait, to the on. courts. They're, 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 so let me get straight. So you have you have a place, right? Yeah. Like like if I go to work. And no one's here. Could someone come in and squat? No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, so here's here's what happened. No. So here's what happened in one case. So uh, that's he, home invasion. It usually it usually happens. <laughs> well, that's what it's. I mean, isn't? No. But it's it, uh, on no, a lesser scale. Finish. Yeah. I'm sorry. On a lesser scale. So so Ted's an expert on squatting. So yeah. So so here's here's two cases. So one case, I don't know what state it was, but the guy. So here's what usually happens. It's an out of state. So the mother. It's an elderly couple. The father passes away. They can't keep the mother in the house. They have to move her away. And so the house is vacant, but it's up for sale. They didn't say how long it was, but it didn't seem like it was a long time. And apparently the squatters moved in. And, of course, they had they had their alibi lined up where it's like, oh, I paid $6,000 to a realtor. Okay, but that's fake. Yeah, of course it's fake. But it's, it's yeah. all it's, but, it's all and, lies. And, and they're pretend, how is it and they're pretend, trespassing? And they're pretend, yeah, it is trespassing, but they, they claim they're the victims. But the point is— <laughs> But when, they're not the but, victims. Yeah, but yeah, of course they're not. But when they call the when when the actual owner calls the police, the police always say the same thing. It's a civil matter. You have to go through the courts, so that buys the squatters more time. So long story short, they can get rid of the squatters, but it's going to take months. So this one guy, you heard about the guy in California. What he did was no. he actually found out there were squatters at his at his mother's place uh, after she moved out. He packed up his car. Drove to California from where he was, moved moved into the house when, when they, the, they, when when the squatters were out. Yeah, because I guess they never changed wait, the they never wait, changed the with locks. With the squatters, yeah, the squatters were already there, but they were they were physically out of the house for that day. He moved in and he had a, he drew up a lease himself between him and himself, saying that so he re squatted. He re squatted. Yes, he squatted. And, and, and so out. when so when the actual squatters came back, he said, "Hey, I'm here now. You need to get the fuck out." Or you know, and he had a, he had a couple of shotguns with him. I mean, he never took them out. But the point is, they left. I, so I don't okay okay. Yeah. So I don't understand this. So so somebody squats right, yeah. and then and then they leave. They they go to work or whatever yeah. a squatter does. Yeah yeah. So how, how is it that they can come back? How are you not have, standing at the door with a machete? Have you ever seen say, a movie? Hey, go ahead and try. Have you ever seen the movie Pacific Heights? Yeah, Pacific Heights with Michael Michael Keaton. He's breeding cockroaches. He changes. That's Michael what the squatters. Yeah, but wasn't that guy like a renter? This yes. this is no, just yes, walking yes. into no, no, your house. No, he's no, he's a professional. There's people go there. There was called that was per- Matthew, uh, no, Matthew Matthew McConaughey. Matthew Modine. Yeah, Matthew Modine. Modine. No, they're, yeah, they're yeah. professional. They're professional tenants. So here's what a professional tenant does. They're not squatters necessarily, but the professional tenant, they they they're very charming. They move in. They might pay one month of rent and they'll never pay you again. And then it's going to take you two years to get them out because they'll, they'll get a free legal aid attorney that, that, they'll make that, up that stuff is, that is but not, it's, it's almost the same thing but here, here's my thing with a yeah. squatter they 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 okay so say they they show the, the police come and they, they show them a fake thing it's mm-hmm. fake so how, how no, can you not the, say if, no, if the, i'm the, there or say that's fake no the, no, the, no the police don't know so the police always say the same thing the police will always say it's a civil matter you have to go through the court so they're not going to arrest the squatter so we know that so here's what you need to do so if so here's here's a good tip i guess Kill this, I the suppose, squatter. yeah so you need to forcibly extract the squatter by any means necessary hopefully without murdering them but i mean but but you really by have re-squatting to by re-squatting but you re-squatting but yeah you basically have to like commandeer the house when they're not there assuming but there's then, nobody then there but then when you leave how why, why wouldn't they just come right back in i mean it's, it's possible it, but it's, it's such a ridiculous well, that's yeah, a fun yeah, game yeah but yeah. The, but the funny thing is i mean <laughs> it's i guess a squatter the, game, the point the point is i guess you have to create so much chaos for them where it's it's you you take them like way out of their comfort zone where like it, it's not worth their time to try to 
re-squat. You know, because the bottom line is, so for example, the one case, you know, the bottom line is if you're the legal homeowner, you have the documentation, the squatter is lying, obviously. So whatever the documentation they claim they have, it's obviously manufactured. This, this seems so when, so here, when it goes to the court How did this it, ever it, start? It's, it's been it's, around for years. But how did it ever start? It's this different so in each, each state. Yeah. And there's actual legal term called squatter's rights. Squ- yeah. yeah. No, but, I, but I it's 20 years. So, so uh, just real quick. So there was a case <laughs> in Pennsylvania where a woman... She I, she had a farm, and she's been there for like 20 years, and the guy next door has been there for 25 years, whatever. So I guess part of their part of the land of this guy was on her land. So she was using his land for 20 years straight oh, without— yeah. Yeah. she got it. So, yeah. And she got it legally. So basically See, she, she, was able, she was able to commandeer like five acres of his land. See, and that he, doesn't and make any and sense. And if, if it's legally his land, yeah, and, they, and you, they just no, forgot— but, or, but, but, No, but, but, if, but if it's open and—so here's the bottom line. If it's open and obvious, and if it's like going on for, like say, right. 10, 20 years, then the squatter actually wins. But obviously we're talking about somebody who just moves into a house under the cover of night, changes the locks, moves in their furniture, and claims it's theirs. Yeah, obviously the legal owner is going to— can get rid of them, but it's going to take them at least six six months to, to a year. So, so you're saying that I need to, when I rebuild my fence, is make my fence just a few feet bigger on both sides, so I have more yard. And if my neighbors just don't catch on, they don't catch on. After 20 years, you can actually claim uh, that land as your own. Yeah, 20 years. I think it's usually 20 years, depending on the state. It's a state by state thing. But yeah. okay, so I'm just going to throw this out. You guys you know have, Michael you have Jordan to prove it and stuff. Yeah, like you guys that. know Michael Jordan's house is empty right now, right? The one he's trying to sell. And oh, you're, you're, oh, way, what's, what's, you're what's, way behind on that. What's, my friend. what's the address? Is there somebody <laughs> squatting in it? Already? My brother and I have been living there for three years. <laughs> Three Son years we've been, been there. You've been, been playing hockey? Son <laughs> of a bitch. Because cause that's what it would take, right? I just go there and say I'm there, and it takes forever to get them out. Yeah, so. well, think about it. Think about how many abandoned, it's like 16 think, think about how many abandoned properties there are in, in the country. You could technically move into a house that's like that's like a bank-owned a bank owned house. You know, nobody's checking up on it, mm. and you could turn on the utilities. You could fix it up. And yeah, they, I mean, the, the risk is. Wait, if, I have to spend my own money? If someone gets rid of it, you know, if someone gets wind of it, they can tr- try to get rid of you, but it's going to take them at least six months, you know, but. All right, I'm you know, doing this. Yeah. So, You've been listening to squatters' yeah. rights. No, so listen, this. okay, that's cool. I'm going to go around. I'm going to find some places. You, oh, you know what I'm going to do? When they say like a famous guy or a famous girl are selling their mansion, because they moved, yeah. and you know it's empty. Yeah. I'm going to live there. Yeah. Well, think about rich people. They probably okay. have like, they have like five, six houses like in different states. <gasps> and there we go. And it's probably probably uh, one house is empty for a certain period of time. I actually yeah. know somebody yeah. that my my cousin's you know a squatter. My cousin's <laughs> friend, he's really well to do. His parents are, and they own like four different homes in California, and they only live in one. And they won't rent, and they won't sell them out. They they won't sell them. They have so much money, but these are very valuable properties. But they don't occupy. They only occupy one. The other three, they just upkeep and keep. And road work. trip. Yeah, that's yeah. what I. California, you have to pick your state. Illinois is different so, than, than so, yeah. most states. California, California is the anything. most liberal. You can yeah. do so, anything. So the, bo- the bottom the bottom line, if I guess if you wanted to be a squatter, if you find a place and you're able to get like just commandeer it, move in, you you bought yourself at least six months. At least, so let's just say the homeowner is super aggressive in getting rid of you. It's going to take him a minimum six months because they have to serve you with a ten day notice. I'm bored with this. Yeah, in yeah. California, Sorry. did you know in California, if you're swimming in somebody's pool and you pee in that pool, <laughs> that's your pool now. You marked your territory. You actually, that's your pool. So they ha- they have no pool rights anymore. It's called piss and pool rights. <laughs> so pool. if you piss in their pool, yeah. that's it. They had the fucking house. They have the pool outside. That's your pool now. Did did I? T- did they have some sort of stuff they put in the pool now, so that if you pee, it comes out like oh, that's purple an urban or something. Legend, dude, that I, is an I urban mean, legend I, I got, that my I, grand, my my family been telling really? me since we were kids. Yeah, there's no such. I got thing. some. Oh, I got no some. Way. I got some funny landlord Who stories. Told you that. No, no funny landlord stories, Ted. How to get I, rid of? How to get rid of? Ted. Uh, Ted. Ted. Certain tenants. That'll be for another time. We yeah. won't do that. Now. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do any of that stuff. Yeah, that thing where you. That's that, tenant that, talk. We're that, talking. This is squatter talk. Squatter talk. Yeah. Yeah. We're not gonna do that thing where guess what I have in my trunk and you open it up and it's somebody's body. No, no, we're not, yeah. we're not no, talking no, about that. Not that about again. That stuff, I, yeah. I'm not doing that. We're talking about guerrilla warfare. Anyway. So, all right, all right, before we get to Teddy's tips, did you guys know there's a TV station that puts trials on all day long? Yeah, Court yeah. TV. No, it's a, it's, there's actually a different one now. There's actually multiple. <laughs> there's more than yeah. one. Yeah, that's been, out for year, that's been around for but, years, though. Multiple. And um, there's one with Gwyneth Paltrow. Have you guys seen this? Yeah, she, oh, yeah. Ski, she, she ran into somebody I or heard something? About, I heard about that. I didn't. See, I haven't watched any so, of it. Yet. So I, I, I've never that's watched. That's on that channel right yeah, now? Yeah, so I've never watched, but I turned on five minutes. Trials are boring. They were really super and boring. Stupid yeah. And stupid. Yeah. And endless. And I can't imagine, after five minutes, I can't imagine having to be a juror and sitting through this thing. It's going to take, what, a couple of weeks at least, right? And you have to listen to this crap. These, 
Look, I, I like to think of myself as fairly and, and educated. This, and this happened in 2015, by the way. This happened like a long time ago. But, this but, but time the ago. concept of sitting here and trying to take a regular person and take all this crap. I just listened to a doctor talk for five minutes, and it was mind-numbingly boring oh, and stupid and, and back and forth. How could a regular person who knows nothing about the law ever make a decision on anything? This seems This whole concept of 12 jurors... To, to decide something like this is stupid. No, you're out of your mind. It's just stu- you're out of your mind. That's one of the greatest rights that this country affords us is trial by our our peers. Yeah, but I'm not sure our a, peers. A tri- I mean, you want one fucking judge? No, that's picked by by somebody else to decide on your fur. No, your, but your... I don't think twelve people have. I, I, honestly, I don't think I don't see how you could stay awake. I was bored to oh, death. I that's... thought it would be interesting. I don't see how you could pay attention and know anything that's happening. Can I, can I summarize court the court the jury system in like one sentence? For everybody's purposes, and just get over with. Okay, so here's here's the here's the bottom line, guys. Okay. The truth is a relative concept, and what that means is that there's my version of the truth, and then there's Mark's version of the truth. And if I happen to be on, drunk on point that day and no. more articulate than Mark, they're going to believe me. He might be telling the truth. I might be a liar, but I just have to convince twelve idiots or twelve, you know, oh. not three idiots, but twelve idiots. Just say hey, I'm right and he's wrong. That's all. That's all it takes. That's only nine more idiots than are sitting exactly, here. Exactly. Right yeah. You realize that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? I mean. I th- no. The premise of this is though she ran into somebody and injured them allegedly. Right? Or, or, or no, yeah, wait, allegedly. Is that dis- is that in dispute? Yeah. So if she somebody actually no, even no. ran into her. No, so she that's says, not disputed. She right? says he ran into her. He, okay. he says yeah. she, he ran into her. It's like a car, ran, ac- ran into it's him. A car accident, except yeah. it's on the ski slopes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like the Reese's. You know, you put chocolate in my peanut butter, or peanut in my chocolate. Yeah. Yes. And now I want ten and million. And she's a famous actress. So actually, what I heard the funniest part is I heard that she has a lot of conditions because you know she's a princess and she's a she's an Academy Award winning actress. Yeah, I guess so the, for her to appear at the trial, there has to be certain standards that have to be met. So she's comfortable and blah blah blah, you know, because she's a very Sir? because she's a very important person. Is, is this is this Avian? Is this <laughs> Avian water? Yeah. I will kill everyone in this room. Okay, I drink. Hey, I Perrier. used to have sex with Brad Pitt. <laughs> I Wait, will kill you guys. Gwyneth Paltrow went with Brad Pitt for years. Oh, I didn't know. She that. was pretty I, hot I back then, though. Yeah. yeah, she was pretty hot. I mean, he's yeah. he's pretty. I think hot. They met on the set of, of the movie Seven. Remember that? Oh, I love the movie. Seven. She got her head cut really? off and put in a box. Oh, that's right. She was when he goes, "What's in the box?" Asshole! <laughs> I didn't. I've never seen that. Well, there's two different seven? endings. There's two different endings. So what? There's anyway, two different don't, don't endings. Wait, is there me. is there an ending where her head's not in a box? What's in the box? There are, there are alert. two different endings. Spoiler alert! <laughs> and the endings are exactly the fucking same. That's not. I have the DVD. Endings. It says two different endings, and then they literally play two different endings. And Kevin, it's like the same Ke- thing. Kevin Spacey is, and, was in that movie, and oh. I think it was uh, and how many young Morgan was Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. yeah. You know. Oh yeah. No. No. You know what? It was I a good did, movie. I did see part of that. Yeah. I think I. You know what? What's I think in the I. Box? Saw, I told you guys my theory, right? I just watched Seven. like the last fifteen minutes, and if it looks cool, yeah. then I'll go back and watch the beginning. It was a good. It was a good movie. <laughs> There's a word that's coming to mind right now. Idiot. But we're not allowed to say. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. That's yeah. We're not saying. We're not saying that word anymore. Okay, um, let's get started, and then we got to do Teddy's tips, and we have a very special guest. Have, and I don't mean like spe- I mean like very special. We haven't, star- very we haven't special. started yet. Well, I mean, I'll do the I'll <laughs> okay. do the, the intro. Thing. He remembered. Yeah, yeah, Jack, you freaked me out when I did it like for the third time. I, I have this big star right here, and it says, she "Say call- this." She called you Ted. <laughs> did she really? Ted, are you going to start the show? I mean, Matt, are you going to start the show? <laughs> that's Aww. a that's a Freudian slip. <laughs> My piece sister own, thinks a piece I'm of stupid. his own medicine. Oh, that was oh, a man. low blow. It is. Okay. Oh. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Matt, and this is the Real Three Idiots podcast. Um, with me, as always, is a man who, every time we hang out, has to tell me what he has eaten that day, Teddy. I'm sorry. Have, have, we, met, have we met? Teddy, you know that. You know that. Every time, every time we're out, you have to tell me what you've eaten. You when? do that every time. You, you're, you're not there, Mark. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Admit it. So here, here's the thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna deny everything you just said, and you know and then Mark, and Mark has no idea that if I'm telling the truth or not. Right. It's true. It's true. Mark, I've never said that. Give to him me one, one time. instance, like when well, how would he would introduce this topic? Oh, uh, like uh, what, well, how would he bring so, it so up? So we're at we sit at the bar, and he'll be like, "Oh, you want some food?" And I'll be like, "You know what? I don't know if I want to eat." He goes, "You know, I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. The last thing I ate, and then he'll tell me the last you thing." You know he what? Ate. Come to think of it, he's, he's done he's that li- before. We started the show before. Yeah. The, the yeah. show he told us he had euros. Yep. He, every single time. And then you said, he said, oh, you actually, I, I had a beef today. I did have a beef today. Yeah. Yeah. You do it. Ted, and then two it. weeks in a row, you but said you okay, had Ted. euros. <laughs> yeah. That's when I made the. Yeah. Teddy, it's okay. Should I, do you need a psychiatric referral that I can write? Teddy, down? don't, don't be upset. <laughs> don't be upset. Okay. And um, a man who I just found out is writing all of Rihanna's songs for her new album, Mark. She's bringing sexy back. 
Dude, she's not sexy. That, that thing where she stuck her fingers in her butt and smelled it, that was so wrong. Man, you don't I, think that was sexy? I do not think that was sexy. Man, neither do I. I'm I, the one that brought it up. Man, that was... I think you missed that. Did you miss that? I, no, I, I saw it. That, oh, okay, I, I saw, saw it, it, man. I was wondering if anybody else saw it. Oh, that was just... That <laughs> was I, I don't watch any... So what was that? The that super, was Super Bowl. Was that the Super Bowl? I do think... I do so think you, you. I do think that she has a great voice. I do think she's a great singer. She, she does. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, honestly well, do. Here, let, She's no so, Beyonce. I mean, but, yeah. I, mean, let, I mean, let's face it. If you're performing at the halftime show of the Super Bowl or some presidential inauguration or something major event, you got a great voice, right? Yeah. I mean, do, well, that's why I chose her. Get, that's why I chose her to write songs yeah. for. Yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna have you know. Well, I don't want you write. Yeah. Listen, I don't want you writing songs for like. Shania Twain, yeah. or you know, one of these other like half-ass singers. I mean, I, it's got to be somebody. Uh, big. Who gets invi- oh, yeah. who gets invited to all the big events? Um, Me, yeah, uh, you? so like I said, Beyonce. Uh, what, what's that other one? Um, they turned Adele. She always gets invited to the big I events. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so right. like, or uh, what's the one? Uh, the uh, the one who's more talented than Madonna. She's kind of like the newer version of Madonna. Oh, Lady Gaga. Like, yeah, she's Lady Gaga. She's always at some, some presidential inauguration. You know, well, it's not more talented Madonna. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Th- th- let's let's right away let's nix that. What? I mean, She'll Lady be Gaga's the first to admit that she's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's Gaga's being humble. Good, she's a way bigger, Madonna. better singer than Madonna. Dude, no. We, we did you we know that when this forward. Madonna she changed. Not only did she have excellent songs that I she probably did. know she, all she, of my heart. She did, yeah, yeah. But she she literally set like like. People dressed like her for like t- like eight years. No, I agree. You're right, but but the point is, Lady Gaga has I a much like better her. voice. I heard than Sean Penn wrote all her songs. I think songs. you're wrong. Sean okay. Penn wrote all her song, Wrote all her songs. You're you're lying right now. You're making <laughs> that up. That's ridiculous. That's that's absolutely ridiculous. All right, so we got to get rolling here because our guest you is going to be on Spico- oh, I mean. Spicoli. Yeah. So our guest is going to be on in just a little bit. In fact, he's going to get to hear Teddy's on right now. So he's going to get to hear your tip. Okay. Oh, hello, Mr. And he's, he's going to get... Uh, that's, that's all right. Leave him. Leave him. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get our uh, sponsor. And then you've got an awesome song, Mark, that you won't let me sing. So I'll just go ahead and do my thing. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I'm not upset. Okay. <laughs> um, if you're like me, you have a hard time enjoying dog fights because of your allergies. You don't have to let your allergies ruin your love of canine sports anymore. The Acme Company has the solution for you. Acme Super New and Improved All-in-One Organic Allergy Medicine will help you no matter how much hair, blood, or entrails happen to stand in your way of enjoying a good old-fashioned dog fight. So the next time your friends call you up and tell you that they're heading over to Bubba's Barn for a weekend of drinking and dog fighting, you can say, hell yes, thanks to Acme Super New and Improved All-in-One Organic Allergy Medicine. And for those of you who love cockfighting, we have a formula just for you. Acme, we care, just not a lot. Excellent. Nice. nice. Mark, song, please. All right. We ready? Ted, if, I'm going to throw that phone in the garbage. It's, a, it's, it's business. No, it's not. It's business. Okay, go ahead, Mark. There's a claim up. coming through. All right. <laughs> on the show again. Ted can't wait to get on the show again. Ted's just giving tips to each and all his friends, and he can't wait to get on the show again. On the show again. Teddy's learning people with a grin. He's just saying things he may never say again. And Ted can't wait to get on the show again. On the show again. Like a bad man, he'll toss you down the highway. You're not the best of friends. Insisting that you do all things his way, not your way. He's on the show again. Ted can't wait to get on the show again. The life he's loving is making Teddy's tips for friends. And he can't wait to get on the show again. Wow. Good Willie Nelson rendition. I like that. Man, we got to go to karaoke. Yeah. I'm not, I know, saying, I'm, I'm, not singing, singing, actually, I'm not singing it. The one time I ever got up to do karaoke. How many pictures of beer? Guys like, how, many, how many pitchers of beer did you have? The guy the guy's <laughs> like, Oh yeah, yeah. I was with a group of friends and the guy's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on up. I you know, you picked a song, he calls you up to do the song. Yeah. I get up there, the song starts, I start to sing, and bam, it crashed. He's like, Oh shit, we lost it. What? He's like, pick another song. I'm like, I'm done, dude. That was my song. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. Oh my god, that is de- So that's... I've never done karaoke, or they call it Maris- in Minnesota they call it karaoke. That's what Ted calls it. My wife calls it karaoke. Oh, I don't want to go there. That seems wrong, so I'm just going to Minnesota move on. calls it karaoke, different states. Okay, I, I have no idea. All right, Teddy, you ready for your tip? I am. Okay, um, this comes, I, I got this. It says, Ted, I need your help. 
Let me start off by saying that neither myself, my wife, nor my son are stalkers. We live in a mid-sized West, Midwestern city. We need to get our 24-year-old son to move out. He's got a good job, a girlfriend, and plenty of friends. I'm not sure if his friends are stalkers. They seem nice. He's a great kid, but we have two younger children. Again, both not stalkers, and we need the space. How can we nicely, without changing the locks or moving away and not telling him, have him move out? Hmm, that's a good one. Well, I mean, obviously he's a grown man. Sounds like he's got a good uh, a good social network. He's got a girlfriend. So obviously the first tip would be, depending on the girlfriend situation, he should move in with the girlfriend. That seems like the logical answer. But assuming that she doesn't have the means of support, I would say the main thing is you need to incentivize him to leave on his own. So obviously if he's doing this against his will, it's going to be harder. So is this like a squatter thing? You, so well, you... He's almost like a squatter. I mean, really, basically he's a squatter. At this point, he's a squatter. <laughs> when you think about it, when you think about it, he's actually a squatter because they, they, they want him gone, you know, in a nice way, of course. But the point is he's an unwelcome visitor. At this point, he's, he's overstayed his welcome. So, so they could do a few things. They could basically... Uh, maybe refer him to an apartment. They could they could put a down payment on an apartment for him, and then have him move out. Uh, okay. A security deposit, and just say, "Hey, we'll f- help you find an apartment." Have him move out. Give him a deadline: six months to a year. I mean, you you've obviously have experience with this. Yeah, my um, dad kicked me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or you know they could they could kind of do they could do a little mind fuck with him. They could do like a house hack. They could just say, "Hey, in six months from now, uh, we're we're taking out a uh, <laughs> like we're taking out a, a HELOC loan on the house or an equity loan on the house. So we're gonna we're gonna have a, a tenant who's gonna occupy your room. So it's called a house hack where you basically ha- you have somebody move in who helps pay your mortgage. So hey, in six months. Either you're going to pay full price or, you know, we have to have this individual come in or we're going to turn your room into a den or, or like a, uh, you know, like a like a game room or something. So give them a deadline. Stick to that deadline and remind them every couple of months. Just say, hey, you know, you have six months from today, <laughs> one year from today and remind them every couple of months. Just say, hey, uh, how's it going? You got you got three months. You got six months. And just say and honestly, I guess if you had to go scorched earth on them, you know, in a nice way, hire like a friend that he doesn't really know to come in and kind of live there to make his life uncomfortable where he wants. I'm, no, I'm serious. If you got to go scorched earth just to have him leave. So, so wait a minute. So you're saying, you're saying that they just find some random guy, not a random guy, like a, fr- like a friend of the family or like a relative that either he knows or he doesn't know, <laughs> but just do like a mind fuck on him where he, this person's moving in and it's going to invade. So, so and, smelly and, cousin Scott yeah, just comes it's in. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. The, the more offensive, the better invades his privacy so badly that he just wants to get out of there. So, so the bottom line, the incentivization <laughs> to come from him so you have to incentivize him because if he's co- if he's comfortable he's not going to leave we're all co- when we're comfortable we're never going to do anything to to change it but if you're uncomfortable you want to change that real quick i am very uncomfortable right now exactly i am very uncomfortable exactly. yeah. oh, have, have times changed yeah. or what yeah why when i was growing up we got thrown out when we were 18 my brother and i well, my I mean, brother I, went to the Marines. Like a baby bird. Out of the list. No, like a baby we, bird. My dad, my dad made it very clear. He's like, when you guys turn eighteen, you're uh, out of there. You're I mean, out of a, here. That's a little harsh. Yeah, yeah I know. but I mean, technically, he he does have rights because he lives there. So like, they can't like, let's just say they can't physically throw him out, which they're not going to do. So let's let's throw that out, let's throw that out the window. So we they have to find a way to incentivize him where he wants to leave on his own. And so those techniques, I think, work good. The worst case scenario, you get somebody like a good friend or relative to move in. And kind of oh, like invade man. his space where it just makes it so inco- it's so untenable for him that he's going to want to leave. But the first option is, hey, we'll help you get an apartment. We'll even throw it on your first security deposit and first month's rent. So if you're you, bribing him. Bri- you're bribing him to leave. You're bribing him to okay. leave. That's okay. Right. But he's gone. But he's gone. But once once you hit, do that initial bribe, you're not you're not continuing to pay for him. Okay. You're just getting him out. Once he's out, he's gone. And All then right. you change his room into something else. I, I love he's that. He's never coming back. Doctor West, do you do you have any kids? I just um let's see. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir. yeah. Can, oh, can yeah. you hear us? Okay. okay. It says on, on Zoom. It says three idiots is connecting to audio. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah, no. Can you can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Fine. Oh yeah, yeah. I no, just want to. I, I feel. I feel. I feel like I need, I need to butt into this conversation. Please do. Um, awesome. <laughs> so I think I, I, with all respect, but um, I think your advice is really bad. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's okay. So, That's cool. So this is what I would do. I was gonna say so, poison. I was gonna say poison, but we can't say that on the air. So, you know. <laughs> oh my God, Bella, no, Belladonna, no, this is, strychnine. This is much better than poison. <laughs> okay. Much better. All right. So um, there's this guy and his girlfriend living at home, right? And the parents want him to leave, right? This is the correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Anyway, so you are all focused on the wrong horse here because um, the way to get this dude to move is to piss off his girlfriend. 
So what you do is you get sexiest, hottest, hottest, most, I like to walk around in my bikini and underwear all day at home. Sexy as fuck, girl, girl, <laughs> friend of the family. I don't care who it is. You get her to move into the house for like a week or two. And I guarantee you, this guy will get his girlfriend. She will say, we're fucked. We're moving. We're getting out of here right away. And he will have no choice in the matter. That's pretty Machiavellian. I that's like, I like that. I like, I like that one. That's it. I like that one. Okay. But, but I don't want it to be a family friend because I want to enjoy it too. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to have to hire like a, I'm going to have to hire like right. a street walker. Cause, cause I don't want my, I don't want my you niece. Hire walk, whoever, yeah. you might, like I, I guarantee it will not take more than like two days. And You're right. His girlfriend will say, I, we can't stay here. And she'll make up all kinds of excuses why they can't stay, except <laughs> that there's a sexy girl in the house. Mm. And the sexy, then they'll the, sec move. the sexy nanny angle. I like that. So, okay, okay. this is, <laughs> you know, was, I was going to say put Visine in his food to give him the, oh my the shits God, all Ted. day, but yeah, we can't Jesus do that. Jesus Christ. All right. I didn't want to go there. So, so <laughs> Dr. West, all, all we need you to do yeah. is be here yeah. uh, once a week yes. for 15 minutes <laughs> and we can, we can change it to Dr. Samuel West's. <laughs> tips and then ted can just sit here and then he can kind of disagree and then talk about poison because that's yeah. the autopsy will not find strychnine unless they do your hair their hair or your your finger cuticles okay so just remember that i am so uncomfortable right now okay uh, so just go cremation right away holy crap this is this is the this is the best ever okay so our guest this week comes all the way from sweden and he is dr samuel west from the museum of failure I already love this guy. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> thanks so much for being on. Thank you. Yeah, this is really exciting. All right, so so Doc, everybody who's who's looking at this or listening to this is saying Museum of Failure. What is a Museum of Failure? So the uh, museum is a collection of failed innovations from around the world. There's like there's failed food products. There's failed you know uh, smartphones toys, medical products. We even have, you know, sex toys and adult products that are failed on the market. So everything in between, we have a, a you know, full-size cars in the museum. So it's things where the products or services have in some way disappointed whoever wanted to, you know, most likely profit from it. Oh man. And these things are, I mean, when I looked at the website and, and, you know, when people walk in, I mean, all these things are super, super um, um, big, super popular, right? That failed. I mean, you're not picking yeah. out tiny little things. You're talking about giant, no. massive, epic failures that you know, people spent tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to get going. Yeah, billions sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the the Nokia phone thing. <laughs> that was, yeah, it was like five billion dollars, and that was back like in the like in the eighties or something. I remember like, Nokia? Holy yeah, crap. I think I might have bought some stock in Nokia back in the day. But yeah. those things, sometimes, <laughs> and you you make it a point though. Sometimes you have to fail to innovate, right? Some of those products yep. ended up taking. I mean, having a worth in the end, right? It cost a lot of money. Yeah. It that failed, but in the end, it had a lot of worth and value and led to something, right? I mean, absolutely. There's there's some good examples of companies that have really can you say fuck on this show or not oh yeah oh yeah sure fuck you yeah. can say fuck so, there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's 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 i mean one of my favorite examples is nintendo uh you know the gaming company they um they tried really hard with two different endeavors to make video games more um immersive and sort of you know interactive uh, the N Nintendo Boy, uh, Virtual Boy, which is sort of a 3D-ish complete clusterfuck. Um, <laughs> and then they had the, they had a, like a glove called the Nintendo Power Glove. I remember was, that glove. Yep. Like, oh, yeah. You remember, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, know yeah. Anyway, I, I did not know what that was for, yeah. and I used it wrong. I bet you did. I used it wrong. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's not, a ball, it's not a ball caressing mechanism. It's, it's a video game. <laughs> There is wow. nothing sexual about the power glove. I'm no. sorry. Well, yeah. <laughs> let me, let me tell just, you something. Yes, there is. No, you just look at that thing and you're like, no. All right. So, so, uh, so, so those, so Nintendo. So, what happened with Nintendo? How did those? So anyway, so these two, these two products um, were absolute. They were they were failures on the market. But um, Nintendo, unlike most companies, they actually learned from their mistakes, and then they, from these, you know, fuck ups. They then learned and they created one of the most successful gaming consoles of all time, which was the Wii. The Wii. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. No, seriously. Is the like, Wii, the Wii is, is a, a thing? 
Yeah, yeah that was a Nintendo big, that was Wii. A thing. It was a big thing. Yeah. I have no idea. Are you? Did you, I, I, I did, did you grow up in a cave or what? I don't. don't I, know, I don't play video games. The Wii was a big thing. Um, I don't play it was, video games. It came out about what eighteen years ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah for, I'm in my for 50s, the first, dude. I'm an adult man. I for don't the play video first, games. for the first five years, it was amazing. The different consoles they had. They had a, a red console, and then they actually had amazing games with Disney. They had that Mickey uh, game. But yeah, you, the you Wii, can actually. Yeah, you used your body. You used your you body, used yeah. Your, yeah, yeah. You, st- you stand on it, and you could play like tennis, and you could do other stuff. It's it's pretty interactive because my my kid my, had one of those. Yeah, my my kids are are, are I, I just play. My tennis. kids are seventeen and nineteen. We still have our Wii console. Their friends come over, and they still fuck with it. Yeah. Really? Oh my god! It's yeah. it's a it's the it's a blast. They'll come over, and they have, I, and they'll come over, and they're like, "We're gonna put the Wii on." I'm like, "That's fucking awesome." It's wow, so we're bad. really going fuck crazy today. I like this. So, so I got, I got, I'm gonna, <laughs> I've been, I'm hold, sorry, I've been I'm, holding back because you told me. Yeah, to. I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm going to forget this question. I want to ask it now. So what, <laughs> what's something that looks like it was going to be successful? It was on the cusp of being successful, but it was it was a failure overall. But it looked like for a long time it had all the, it checked all the boxes. It looked like it was going to be successful, but it was ultimately a failure. It wasn't like a spectacular failure. Oh, that's but... a good. I love that question. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I asked. I it. would. <laughs> <laughs> and not, the, and not um, these guys. You unplug him. <laughs> You're the smart guy in the bunch. Well, I, let's not go um, that far. <laughs> uh... <laughs> let's not go that far. <laughs> um, so I would say. It might not be a sexy answer, but it's a good one. Um, the segue. So the segue was. You guys are you old enough to remember the segue? Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. So I, that, I was shocked at that one because I thought that was a thing. I see segue tours all over the place. Yeah, it was an absolute catastrophe of a failure because um, it was expected. So it came out in two thousand one ish somewhere yeah. there, and. Um, it was supposed to, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, the technology is amazing. It's a, you know, it, it's, it, it's not like anything else that you've seen before. At the, you know, in yeah, it's, a, it's a bike you can't fall off of, right? I mean, it's genius. Yeah. It's a self-stabilizing <laughs> crazy thing. Um, and it's, you know, it's sexy as hell as technology goes. Oh yeah. But, um, you know, the, the expectations for this, this thing was that, it was supposed to revolutionize the way people transport themselves. So um, the the predictions were that it would be become bigger than the internet. Really? The segue? Let let that sink in bigger than the internet. Um, Wait, wait, is there, is there a pornography, is there a pornography segue? (laughs) Because if if there's not, it's never going to be bigger than the internet. No, like what, what, like the, the, the expectations were that it would, you know, reach $1 billion in sales within one year. And, that the that cities in the future cities would be built sort of around the Segway because this is the future. And then and then nothing happened. It's used by mall cops and, and tourists getting drunk in New Orleans. Right. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not nothing actually happened there. So it everybody knew or thought it was going to be successful, but it turned out to be, you know, sure, they exist and you can still see them and stuff. And actually they're still used today, but as a commercial product, it was a complete flop. That that yeah. is incredible. No, no, I I mean I understand. Like like that seemed like something. Here, here's something I, I looked at, I looked on your your thing. Here's something that I know was the worst idea of all time because I've mentioned it to like four or five people. The Nike Magneto. Okay, <laughs> so it's it's sunglasses. It's sunglasses, yeah. and or, and they don't have any uh, bands over your ears, right? It's just the glasses part. No no bands. Mm-hmm. In order to wear these, is, tell me if this is right. You had to glue a magnet to your forehead. Is this correct? <laughs> Two magnets. Two. You had to glue. Yeah. Two magnets to your forehead. No. No. Listen. I, I love. No. 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 Not, not to your forehead. To your. To, to your to temples. The sides of your head. Yeah, like the sides. Temples, of your head. Yeah. yeah. What? Who? Who in there? What, I, I mean, I, I love Nike, right? Michael Jordan. They got a movie coming out and all this stuff. How high do you have to be to think that people are going to glue magnets to your head? Well, yeah. I, I mean, when you got like a billion, like you're a multi-billion-dollar company, there's some production Ted. team spitballing. Eventually, you can talk yourself into anything like, hey, this is a great idea because you're just in a little bubble, right? But it doesn't actually translate to anything in the real world. So, I but mean, do, you, can, you can, you know, you can rationalize anything. After do these companies, doctor, do these companies have so much money that sometimes they have to throw ideas against the wall? And if they don't stick, it's okay because they could take the loss. And if it yeah, sticks, I then mean, they're like, oh my God, okay, well, then let's find something else that does. Yeah, it. I mean, you're partially right there, but I'm. Um, 
for Nike, I mean, this is this was a non-issue for them, and it wasn't a huge cost or anything. Um, but it was a loss of prestige when it when they had you know discontinue it. But but one thing you have to realize about these companies that are always pushing the envelope forward is that they need you know in order for them to continue innovating, they have to fuck up every now and then. Yeah. So and if they're not, I mean, and it's some there's some. I mean, we can laugh at the Nike uh, Magneto. It's a stupid product. There's no way around it. But <laughs> I mean, there, it's a it's idiotic in yeah. every possible way. But but you have to realize that if they don't continue sort of trying out and testing new things all the time, sometimes stupid things, then um, then they won't be innovating either. Right. And once the day they stop innovating, they die. Yeah. So so does that, that so does that kind of explain like all the things that Trump has failed at? Right. Is he is he just <laughs> is he the, just the world's greatest innovator? Because you guys have you guys have oh, to have fuck. in your in your in your uh, museum you guys have to have a whole wing for Trump, right? I mean, there has to be like an entire <laughs> section for the most failed human being on the planet. So so I, I, I uh, you guys you guys are not gonna. I mean, we we started the museum or I started the museum in 2017. This is when Trump was. It was still fun to make fun of Trump. Um, <laughs> Um, and so we put it's we still put fun. an entire it's still fun we put an entire uh, section of Trump in the museum with all of his failed business. Uh, so so most of the items in the museum they have to be innovations to make it in the museum. But I made an exception. <laughs> an exception. To Trump because he's such, <laughs> he's such a fucking failure. Oh, <laughs> you, will, you guys won't believe we have we have Trump Airlines. We have Trump uh, uh, soaps and steaks and, and shampoo. What? He wait, wait. Trump steaks. Wait a minute. Trump did Trump shampoo steaks. steaks. Well, it was from his resorts that failed. Oh, um, nice. We have Trump, Trump's uh, uh, frozen steaks uh, that that the that where he only sold it at this store called the Sharper Image that sold like oh yeah. Dildos wait, you could buy or, steaks at the Sharper Image. Trump steaks only. Trump steaks at the Sharper Image. Trump steaks and 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 the CEO of uh, uh, of Sharper Image was like like. We don't believe we sold like more than a couple thousand dollars of those nasty steaks, and nobody <laughs> bought them. Like um, anyway, so that uh, Trump had. Uh, let's see what else do we have? Trump University, which preyed on and scammed low-income people. Litigation on uh, litigation like, ongoing. Yes, ongoing. Yes. yes. Um, oh, Trump don't forget had, vodka. Didn't he? Didn't he do a vodka? Trump vodka. He doesn't drink. Right. So, so how would he know? I mean, that's, that's you know what? Doesn't. That's, I never even thought of that. I mean, he There's could Trump. not. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. So if he's like Trump, well, he doesn't read. He doesn't Trump. go to the theater. He doesn't listen to music. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't do anything. So he really, <laughs> he really, he really he is crazy. Then. All he does is grab them. That's it. He just grabs right. them. You know, grab, grab them by the pee. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's my question. So, I, I was curious to see what in your museum. So here's my here's what I thought about failure throughout history. Here's what I thought about. I thought about the Hindenburg. What it's the, Hind- blip, the Hindenburg blips are fine. It was just a one-time thing. You should have a gas, a gas, a gas yeah, filled I'm Zephyr. I'm going to say yes, but no, I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to give you a on okay. that one. You should have stopped when he said you were the smartest guy It was more of a, a mistake a rather than a, gotcha. Yeah, Titanic. I mean, just for that Definitely particular. In, okay, Titanic. in the museum. In the museum. Yeah. Now, do you have anything about like movies? Like, for example, Waterworld was like like a big flop of a movie where it's supposed to be like a multi. You know, it was supposed to project to being millions of dollars. Yeah. And it was a complete flop. You have movies in in your, we had, in your museum. We had we had a when we had the exhibition in Los Angeles, we had an entire section on failed uh, like box office bombs. Okay. Right. Oh and man, that is yeah. There's one my favorite one. Oh fuck, I can't remember the name of it anymore. <laughs> but it, it was it was the so Waterworld doesn't even get close to this one because it's called. Who's in it? Hot, okay, no, no, I got it. I got okay. it. I got it. Okay, just check this out on YouTube. It's called "You Will, You Will Hate Me for Telling You to Watch This." That's how bad this is. Oh, I love it. Um, no, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, it's with Paris Hilton, and it's called "Haughty or Naughty." Oh, I'm writing this down. <laughs> Hold on. I, I, not, I, I, I naughty, it. naughty, as in naughty, not haughty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not haughty, naughty. Got it. I'm not going to say anything more, but. I've had to watch that thing like too many times when I was editing the video for the show. And I, I, I cannot, I, 
it, I, I can't fathom how bad a movie can be. <laughs> I love I love that this is I love that this is so painful for you. All right, so I want to go through I want to go through a couple of you things. You guys have to watch this. I oh yeah, promise me you'll watch it because it's horrible. It. I'll watch Check it. it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, right so so at one point at one point Mattel comes out with a doll. Okay, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it, it at some point if you if you pull its arm, it gets taller and it grows boobs. It's supposed yeah, to be Barbie's waist. little sister. It's growing up Skipper. And That's it. That's it. Growing she's, up Skipper. She's Barbie's little sister. And what happens is um, first you have the regular doll and she looks like whatever the doll Barbie's sister looks like. And then when you, when you, when you sort of rotate her arm, uh, her waist tightens and she grows boobs. <laughs> That you know that's what? Not only sex, a man. That's, that's not sexualized leave, I'll at all. Leave, I'll just leave this. And I won't. So, so that's her left arm, and then when you do her right arm, her ass goes out. Yeah. And she, and she becomes Kim sink. Kardashian. Right? Oh, she gets old. Right, right. Oh my! Oh, you right. know what? Only a guy, only a guy could come up with that. Only a room full of guys. And then, and then if you zip tie her, you get a, you get a, a felony Ted, Ted, charge against Ted, you. Ted, right. Ted, <laughs> you're going to you're going to a really 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 dark place. I'm done. But I, I I love these things. So you know what? I I, I wonder you know because because I think Mark is right. Like. Some of these things that come out, they failed at the time, but we're trying to do that now. Like, isn't Mark Zuckerberg, he's trying to do like a, um, uh, what do you call it, like uh, uh, virtual virtual reality glasses, right? But somebody came out with those. I, didn't Nintendo or didn't somebody come out with virtual reality glasses? They just didn't do a very good job. So some of the failures, you're right, are just kind of like, you know, things that, you know, were way ahead of their time. I mean, some of the failures are sort of the first iterations of the first versions of them are shit, but then they're refined and then it turns into something that we can actually use. But, but um, I mean, a lot of them are just failures, period. Like they're just, they don't go anywhere. So it's not like failures automatically lead you forward. It's just that in order to move forward, you do have to accept that you will, you know, you will fuck up and you will fail on your way there. You know, um, don't get me started on Zuckerberg right. and his failures. We have like eight things from Facebook in the museum. How, so, yeah. How often? How often does one big corporation fail, and then another pick up that idea and run with yeah. it? Like kind of Matt, what you're hinting at. How often does it it, it happen that 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 they it didn't work for them? Somebody took the actual idea, re-innovated it, and made it work, and they were kicking themselves. Yeah, that, that happens all the time. Does it? So what ha- yeah, it does. because, And it's super expensive for the companies because, like, let's say you've invested a billion dollars into something. Um, I mean, IBM invested, I don't know how, how much money into artificial intelligence. And they hyped it up so, you know, do you guys remember Dr. Watson? Yeah, I yeah. remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. those. Yeah. yeah, so this was this was supposed to be, and I can't remember what year this was, but it's a couple of years, several years ago, where Dr. Watson was supposed to be the super doctor. Well, they that, just call them Watson, right? They would ask questions. Yeah, like yeah, the marketing yeah, was yeah. like, Watson. So uh, Watson could do everything, yeah. right? Um, and they, IBM fucked up because they overhyped it. Like, they 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 promised that this, this medical you know, Watson Medical or Dr. Watson would be able to sort of um, read all the medical journals in the universe. They could read the patient journals and they could sort of, the the computer would be able to generate, you know, treatment uh, programs and write prescriptions. And, and, And these big other companies sort of bought the hype from IBM, invested millions. And we're not talking, you know, little budget here. We're talking massive amounts of money. And it turns out that Dr. Watson was a quack, like it, like it, ther- like Theranos, uh, the blood the blood uh, test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Watson was like uh, worse than having no doctor. Like that's how bad. It <laughs> the emperor had the emperor had no clothes. So here's my here's my here's my question. So, so wait, you, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. And and yeah. So 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 what, what happened there is like IBM sort of like gets you know slapped on the wrist because like you you overhyped this and it's not working and everybody's like okay AI sucks. Well, fast forward till, you know, half a year ago, a year ago, then all of a sudden AI, now there's all kinds of companies grow up, uh, you know, uh, uh, developing AI products that are doing very well. So like 
yeah, one company invested a lot of money, but then other companies are the ones that capitalize on it. Yeah, they, they learn from that. Yeah, so they use the they use the yeah. failed blueprint to kind of succeed where yeah. others fail. So, which is you know that's that's how, how how the world works. But so let me ask you this: Do you have like individuals in the museum? For example, I saw this years ago on sixty Minutes, where the third investor in Apple computers, he was the guy that Jobs and um, what's his name, Steve Jobs yeah, and Woz, Jobs. Wozniak, well, I don't Wozniak, Wozniak and Jobs. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, he he, gets he, he, right. le he lent them fifteen thousand dollars for their first computer project and i guess they were going to do some computers uh build some computers on consignment the guy got cold feet wanted his money back they gave him his money back had he stayed in he would be worth a billionaire like they are in fact he's now he's selling hot dogs at a minor league stadium in, in las vegas and they interviewed the guy i think like 30 years later and just say and they of course they asked him do you have any regrets and of course particularly he said no i don't i would have done it all over again but of course deep down how can you not so okay. do you have people in the museum who just made terrible decisions you know they just invested in something that was just horrible you know but at the time they thought that was the right thing to do but you know they invested in let's say um you know global crossing instead of amazon so individual or failures yeah, yeah individual, individual failures, failures. Yeah, people or is it more like just concepts no these are products and services oh, it's product service um, okay yeah except for trump because he's a <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, all right um, so so let me ask you but, this one but 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 i do i mean i i do think it's interesting i'm I'm not so interested in like calling out people for being failures because yeah. that's sort of like I don't know that, that I don't like that whole idea that you're you're considered a failure because of one or two decisions in your life. No, but, I agree. I agree with that because um, sometimes you make the best you make the you make the best decision with, with the information you have at the time. Up. Yeah, because yeah. you don't because you don't know. <laughs> yeah, if I could go back, yeah. if I know what I knew now, I I would have bought I would have bought Amazon. Back in yeah, the day, because back did. in the day, Amazon was just a book reseller, and nobody thought it would yeah. grow into what it is. No, nobody, nobody no. knew that. I did. Oh, exactly. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? You know what's a good thing to do. I, I, I tell my kids, I say, do you guys really know what Netflix is in in our eyes? Yeah. What we see Netflix is? Yeah. They're like, what? It was a it was a service where you order a movie through the mail, they send it to you. And then you send it back when you're done watching the movie in the same fucking envelope. And if you don't, then you pay extra fucking money in like yeah. three days. So basically, it was a mail. Yeah. They mailed DVDs a mail order to you. Well, look at Blockbuster so, Video. Blockbuster was perfect. I mean, well, Blockbuster it was on every corner. On it was a, no yeah. Blockbuster preceded that. It was on every corner. I've been to Blockbuster. The lines were like out the door back in the day. You couldn't get a movie, and then they went. They disappeared well, overnight. Yeah, I mean, but what it, I'm saying is, changed. what I'm saying is, yeah. Netflix started mailing DVDs, and now they run the world. Well, it's all streaming. They now. rule the world yeah. now, and they they they. That's how they got their start, and that wasn't a failure, right? They were a very successful company in that uh, capacity, right? I mean, Netflix was not a success. They were successful initially with their sort of mail-in service, but they were desperate for cash, and they actually approached Blockbuster, which was Blockbuster had like twelve thousand stores. They were. Wow. They had a monotony. It's a lot, yeah. Blockbuster, yeah. you do not understand how big Blockbuster was at the time. Um, and Netflix offered Blockbuster to buy them for peanuts. Uh, and Blockbuster <laughs> told them to fuck off. <laughs> That's fucking uh, great. In hindsight, oh I should have taken that deal. <laughs> yeah. In hindsight, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. And I mean, and then the 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 the, the fascinating story about Block Blockbuster doesn't get enough attention because it's an interesting story where they actually they could see the writing on the wall they could see that digital streaming was the future so they weren't stupid but they also made 27 percent of their profits from punishing consumers yep. customers for returning their yep. their dvds late no that's way that's a lot of yeah. money that's a lot of money yeah, yeah. wow so yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't know, money. I didn't know that no yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So I, they yeah. when streaming came along, they're like, "Well, we can see that this is the future, but how are we gonna make money? How we can't charge people late fees when they're streaming this shit?" So um, they killed the project and they fired the CEO who was spearheading this. And then I think it was like a year or two years later, Blockbuster was gone. Yeah. Came that over. is insane. Okay, so I want to get to this one because this one is good. So Gerber, who makes baby food, okay? <laughs> See, he's already laughing. Um, Gerber makes baby food. At one time, they came out with, um, like, baby food for adults. Is that right? Correct. <laughs> so, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah so I, like, I, like they had, they, 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 I mean, they had a good thing going, uh, making baby food in a jar. So they decided, like, hey, let's put adult food in a jar. And 
if that wasn't bad enough, they called it singles. So it meant like when you ate it, it's like you bought it and it was like, hey, I'm single and I live alone and I eat my dinners <laughs> oh from my a God. jar with a spoon. So so basically <laughs> like, a, like so, a baby. So if a woman's at, so if a woman's in the supermarket, she's got a single, you just say spinster, right? Spinster, it screams spinster, she's got the cats and the newspaper subscriptions. Yeah, we got it. Okay. 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 Where did they where did they market where did Gerber market that? Was that a, was that a worldwide marketing thing or was that I didn't just know the that. US? I didn't know that. Where did Gerber? I think it was only, I think it, this was in the seventies. I think it was oh, only. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so here's here's a good one, and and this one absolutely blows my mind. And I I think it would be cool now because I don't understand why it's not cool. It wasn't cool back then, but um, Heinz had multicolored ketchups. Right. I remember this. Right. Oh, I don't. I remember, I remember this. Yeah, it was yesterday. I think it was Easy ketchup. Squirt. Yeah, yeah. They, different yeah. different ketchups. Why is that not I hate, cool? I hate that name. I hate the name Easy. Easy Squirts. Squirt, but... yeah. <laughs> that, that was actually my nickname it's in got, college. It's, so. got, it's got kind of like a vaginal vibe to it, so I can see why. Yeah. But uh, but how is that not cool? <laughs> how is multicolored ketchup not cool? I don't understand this. Okay, so let's just walk you through this then. Um, first, <laughs> yeah. you like you're like you're five years old. You have the green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let there me was the green stuff. Yeah. So first you have green ketchup and then they go, hmm, that was interesting because Shrek, Shrek was green. So yeah. um, kids like to buy the, the branded Shrek ketchup. And then Heinz is like, hmm, this is some good stuff right here. So they they developed a blue ketchup, a, um, a yellow ketchup, a purple ketchup and some other color. And like you can see where this is going. Like yeah. nobody wants to have seven colors of ketchup in your fridge yeah i i absolutely do want that i don't know why i mean maybe it's because i'm simple but i i feel uh, like no i feel like i really want that i don't understand the concept behind it all right here's one um um and i, I don't know if this was in your thing but it, it, it freaked me out watermelon oreos what what's so wrong what you're a dude who wants purple ketchup why are you complaining yeah. about watermelon oreos? no no i mean watermelon oreo sounds gross that sounds horrifying that is a real it thing. It sounds as bad as purple ketchup. Yeah, but but it, that's just the color. Watermelon is a taste. It just it freaks me out. That's Nabisco, okay, right? So the Oreo? worst, the worst, no. the worst Oreos we have are. Um, so I have to just before I tell you what the Oreo flavor is, which one is worst? The Oreos, all these, <laughs> all these flavors are not. They're there's so many strange flavors, but they're not failures per se. But they're in the museum because they highlight how. As one of you mentioned earlier, how companies can just you know try new things and see what sticks. Yeah, right? yeah, just throw it to the wall. And, so and Oreo, Oreo uses, I mean, they they create all these you know weird flavors. A because it gives them publicity. I mean, we're talking about them now, and B because um, just to see what you know if any of anything yeah. sticks. And so watermelon Oreos, I've tried. The, I've tried them and they're not any good. Um, <laughs> but the worst one is um, spicy barbecue chicken. Wow. Oreos? I didn't know that existed. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. I am literally sickened right now. <laughs> but they're I want to try it. Pretty bad. So, <laughs> so pretty so bad. I, so I, are there alcohol uh, yeah. failures Ma like that? Modelo Clamato. I was going to say Modelo Clamato. No, that's that's going to be the worst failure. tasting. That's not a failure. Clamato, the, the tomato tasting beer. Yeah, that's that's huge. huge. Oh. Oh, I want that in the museum. I don't have one of those. Get one of those. Because, I want that. I but it's not a failure. No, I've, I've read about it. I've read about it, but I can't find a can. I just so. want, Budweiser, you to, I want you to picture. Budweiser I want you to picture one. drinking your own urine is more pleasurable than drinking Medela Clamato. Wait, my own urine or your urine? <laughs> Either or. <laughs> That's how That's, bad it is. So have yeah. you, but, but have you tried? Do you have you tried it? I've tried yeah, it. I've tried it also. I've tried it. Yeah, it was it's just like terrifying. I was like I was like. It was, what was the what was the point? Like what was the thing? Well, what I'll tell you, it's a it's a cultural thing. So, it Modelo's a Mexican beer, and uh, so like it's like a mix of a Bloody Mary yeah. and a beer. It's like a hangover thing. So I have some Mexican friends, and they used to do this all the time. They would take like V eight, and you mix it with your beer. So they're basically oh. like making a Bloody Mary using beer instead of vodka. And we used to doctor them up all the time. Yeah, I don't think it's a failure. I think it's that's not pretty a failure. popular. Budweiser has one, too. There's yeah. three different. Uh, well, I don't know if InBev owns Modelo. And, well, Miller Lite owns uh, Modelo. I, I, man, think. I don't even, I don't even I, know. I, I didn't like so, it. So, <laughs> Dr. West, let me ask you this. Has, has anybody yeah. ever gotten pissed at you? That your their stuff is in your museum. Not, okay, has anybody ever come at you and been like, this thing's not a failure? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, what, what if we're in a museum one day? 
We can't we can get pissed I, about that. Why can't, we can't a, get pissed about that. Ted, why do you of. think he's on? Well, it's inevitable? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so who, who's got... recording is you're all going in. Right. This. That's okay. Yeah. So who's gotten who's gotten upset with you that, that, that their stuff is in there? A Colgate got upset with me, probably. They're the scariest one. Um, they launched in the... They, you know, many, many, many years ago, they launched a series of frozen dinners. Yeah, the, the toothpaste people. The toothpaste people. The yeah, Colgate they toothpaste, yeah. they created like a frozen dinner. Yeah. Uh, and I found this in the branding literature, of like brand failures. And I'd found multiple sources. So I thought I was, I was fairly confident that this was a real thing. I put, I, I had my intern make a, like a replica of a Colgate lasagna as we envisioned their frozen dinner and i put it in the museum explicitly stating that you know this is a replica we don't actually know what the real frozen food was <laughs> and <clears throat> colgate's lawyers called me and were very animate about that they had no recollection of a colgate lasagna and i was like well <laughs> tell me the real story give me give me the real scoop send me some original packaging and i'll correct my misinformation here and they just said, we have no recollection of the Oh, Colgate that's the best. So they wanted everybody to forget this. And they were pissed forget, at you I'm for like, bringing it I up. I was like, I was like, bitch, this is everywhere. Yes. On the internet. You <laughs> Colgate lasagna and you got my intern's box everywhere. That's right? hilarious. Anyway, so um, they they didn't contact me anymore. And, um, and then in COVID, during COVID, some investigative journalist actually, he's like, I don't. I think Museum of Failure is full of shit. So they're like Colgate's full of shit, but so is Museum of Failure. So they actually, you know, investigated this story. And I had written that Colgate did this in the '80s because that's what I found in my sources. Um, and it turns out that Colgate did launch frozen dinners, but they were in the '50s, and it was dehydrated chicken and crab meat. Oh my God. I, that so, is so, it's like a, it's like an MRE, but the military. Isn't it, but isn't it? That's kind of that's kind of the things that people did, right? Wasn't that that was like a thing, right? Like where you had to have this kind of stuff, and it was like like people trying to be futuristic. That's right? so fifties. Yeah. That's yeah. so fifties. So so, but you did just like like imagine this: you're Colgate, you're this big brand, and instead of just saying, "Guys, this was in the fifties. We made some nasty. We tried to sell dinners, and it didn't work out." We're still cool. You can still brush your teeth with our stuff. Right. Yeah. Instead, they're like, oh, no, we never failed. This never happened. It's like their way of handling this was the exact opposite of the way you should handle yeah, it. Yeah, if they just would have owned it, it would have been, it would have been less, Hell, of a, like, less of a if story. You, yeah. If you guys are like, they sold dehydrated artificial whatever, crab meat, that's not going to make you hate, like love or no. hate. Colgate yeah. that. I think you got to kind of no. don't you have to kind of embrace it like, well, like they're when probably you, thinking like what what do you who do you think we are U Unilever we're not Unilever <laughs> man <laughs> We only uh, you never did their own fair share. Of yeah, at least oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Actually, you know, when I think of the two biggest failure companies who 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 could have succeeded, I think of Kodak and Zenith because Kodak was making cameras for years and they just completely missed the digital camera revolution. I think they just didn't. I think it was in front of them and they just didn't know what they were looking at and they blew that. And Zenith obviously was making TVs forever. And they blew it too. I mean, uh, is, Zenith. Are, are, are they too? Are Zenith, they, are Zenith they, is right in our backyard, by the way. Zenith. Are they in the yeah. museum? Chicago. Those... Uh, uh, Codex in the museum because they invented. They actually invented the digital digital camera. Right. And they did you it badly. Have, do you know what year they invented it? Oh, see, it's got to be like in the nineteen sixties, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're, uh, most people would most people would say like eighties, nineties. It was the nineteen mid seventies. Oh, I would have said I would have said I would have said eighties or nineties. Yeah. Okay, you guys, you're that, yeah. good guess. I, I didn't know um, and they <laughs> they 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 developed it and they were really good at manufacturing it. But what they got wrong was the business model. So they like they got the technology right, but they. they I mean, I, my dad bought a Kodak, one of the first cameras, and it came in a big box, and it came with a printer and <sighs> five sheets of photo paper. Oh, so you could so, take, okay, I get it, I get it. So the idea was you take a photo with your digital camera, Kodak camera, and then you transfer it and you print the photo on your printer, and you had to pay for that uh, photo paper. This was 
Kodak's entire business model that they uh, continued to try to make money on when you printed the photo. And then you fast forward when we all have, you know, phone, uh, right, uh, right. cameras in our phones and nobody prints photos. Correct. Uh, and uh, Kodak even had um, an early version of Instagram. They had something called Easy Share. I think it was something like that. And it was like a photo sharing application. But they didn't understand that the business model is to share photos, not to print them. So they were still trying to make money getting people to use this Instagram. <laughs> that's their whole thing. That's their whole thing. So they, printing, so, they were, so, they were, so, so they were on the right path. They just they just deviated off the path if they just would have, you know, they, like they you said. Didn't, yeah, like you said earlier, they didn't quite get it because they got the technology, but they didn't understand yeah. the business model. Uh, yeah. And they were afraid of changing their business, their extremely profitable yeah. business. Of, of so, developing so that, photos. That's, that's thing, yeah. yeah, that's fascinating. So they, uh, they guessed right, but they just got it wrong. That, that's actually the most interesting thing. Like yeah. when, you're, when you're right, yeah. but you're still wrong. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so yeah, and, and they actually, the, the, I mean, the sad thing or yeah, sad thing about Kodak is, is that the same week or the same month that Kodak, this massive and you know, iconically successful company, they go bankrupt. Within a week or a month, I can't remember, they Instagram with 13 employees was sold to Facebook for $1 billion. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be. I want to be Instagram. Oh, man. I no, want to be that guy. No, don't don't encourage Mark. Don't encourage Mark. No. I, I can't do it. So so let me ask you this: Do people are people constantly coming up to you with like ideas for failed products that you should put into your museum? I mean, is that a giant thing? Yeah, I get um, every time there's a sort of a media story or some kind of attention for the museum, or we open a new exhibition, then I do get and I ask for suggestions because now the past couple of years. I haven't bought anything. I get I get donations to the museum. So I want suggestions and I want I <laughs> I like donations more than suggestions. Well, I, I do have a suggestion. It's a, it's a concept. <laughs> I was thinking about this for weeks when when uh, Matt introduced uh, you to us as a future guest. So there's a lot there's um, I'm a film buff. So there's so much like innovative and uh, uh, inventions in movies that are just fake but they're, they they fail in the movies or they fail conceptually in the movies or they're they're an invention that's so unrealistic. My idea for you is all your products, um, services, and, and uh, what, what, how would you describe it? It's all, it's real stuff, right? It's product and yeah, service, yeah, yeah. product and service. Yeah. There should be a wing of like, like imaginary stuff or movie <laughs> made inventions that actually kind of um, never really became anything, but, it was. I'm. I'm convinced that a lot of corporations watch movies in the last sixty, seventy years, and they come up with their innovations based on something that happened in the movie. Like Back to the Future is very famous for that. Back for the Back to the Future Part Two, because Nike they had the the tie, the shoes that tied themselves. Nike came up with that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All different sorts of things, like the hoverboard, like that was in the movie. Um. There's all sorts of things that 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 movie producers or directors or writers come up with in just their imagination, just for their movie, never thinking it'll be a real thing. And then an innovator comes up with it or a corporation. They say, Oh fuck, we can do that. And they do it. Yeah. That would be interesting to see how things in, in pretend life become real or fail in comparison. There's a, there's, a, <clears throat> there's an idea I heard. I don't know if it actually exists or what, what, but I, I, I thought it was fascinating. The idea of our, our imagined futures mm -hmm. like 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 where where our imaginary like in the in in fiction we imagine futures that never happen like um so those would be the failures that our ideas of how our future would be like like don't turn out to be first yeah. like 1984 that kind of thing well that's, no that's that, that's truth. coming that's coming to that's, real that's, that's real reality. now that's reality now <laughs> What? I told you, no. I just read that book and I'm like, it's eerie. No. I reread it's it. And it's like, I reread it because it's so on. topical. It's dead on. Dead on. But you know, it's yeah. a, another good movie with a bunch of inventions that failed is Gremlins. Remember the dad in, in the movie Gremlins? The movie Gremlins? Ah, no, no. What happened? Okay, the what movie Gremlins, the uh, lead character, the, the kid, the teenager, his dad was an inventor and he went around the world. That's how he got the Gremlin. He went to China trying to sell his inventions and came home with, with uh, uh, 
whatever the name is, a, a mogi or a moki or whatever it's called. He but, invented that? No, no, no. He he invented different things, and he went around the world trying to sell his inventions. And one of them was a multifunctional, like a Swiss Army knife, but it was had like toothpaste, a toothbrush, and toothpick, and a, a water pick, and all this stuff in it. So it, was, it was just a Colgate thing again. It could be, <laughs> but he had a ton of inventions in that movie, and I think some of them actually came became real over the last, you know, few decades. I, I love the concept I, I, of that. I, I, and there's a there's a guy out of uh, Los Angeles that has a concept called design fiction. So he, you know, he, he's a industrial designer, industrial designer, and he uses fiction, sort of like you you mentioned that. Yeah. He uses of like he uses the ideas of you know, science fiction yeah. of the future, and then they actually design stuff. So one of his projects was um, they took an you know IKEA, the furniture Swedish furniture company, right. Um, they they wrote an entire IKEA sort of catalog, but it was published in twenty, you know, twenty one or whatever, like fifty years in the future, yeah. or hundred years in the future. So by imagining what IKEA looks like in a hundred years, there's so many things that are different in a hundred years that we <laughs> can sort of conceptualize and think of. That he they created all kinds of shit based on that uh, very simple premises of. What would IKEA look like or furniture? Look See, like I was I was waiting how long we'd have to wait till you yeah. bring up IKEA. Yeah. yeah. So, here, here's, so, here, so here's my here's, here's, here's my here's my question. Here's my question to you. Here's, here's I like that. Here's my question to you. What's not in your museum now that you might think might be in the next five years? For example, cryptocurrency. That's a big hot button topic where they say Definitely. So half the people are saying this is the future because it's going to replace the, mon the the monetary system in the United States, or is it going to be a, is it going to be fool's gold? That's we have a section at the museum called uh, Failure in Progress. Ah, oh, nice. Uh, so, so there we have uh, cryptos. Um, you know, NFTs have already failed. More sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, That's crazy. That, that was quick. And then we have uh, Elon Musk. Uh, he has a thing called Neuralink where yeah, heard of that. they mm -hmm. operate chips into people and it's supposed to connect humans with computers. Wait, and... they put a chip in your brain? Yeah, they've done it with animals. Um but the thing is, like, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hence why it's in the museum. <laughs> well, it's not in the museum because they won't, they won't tell us it doesn't work. Sure, so right. we don't know. Sure, right, right. <laughs> so we just keep our eye on it. I did fuck up once, though, on this question. Um, I, this was about five years ago. I was invited to a very prestigious tech company, uh, you know, Switzerland, super, super prestigious. Uh, I got paid a lot of money to do a talk there and uh, I'm on stage and I'm being all badass being my by thing. saying by saying fuck every other every other word. I like that. No, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man, fuck, man. I'm a, I'm I mean, you got to you got to you got to you got to command you got to command the stage. You know how that goes, you know, so that's good. <laughs> so what did you say? What got you in trouble? So anyway, so I'm doing my thing and so the owner of the company and this and the, C, the CEO and owner, he was in the audience. And that's fine. That's cool. And then I do my talk and everybody's like, there's 300 sort of managers, directors from all over the world. They've flown in. And, uh, and then I get a question. What do you see today on the market that you think will be in the museum in the future? Uh, and I was like on a roll because everybody loved me and I was like Mr. Super Smart and Professional. And and I say, because I'm an idiot, I say, you know, because um, at the time Apple Watch wasn't selling very well. It was like the first version. And I, I hated it. I thought it was such a stupid thing. Um, so I said, I think the Apple Watch is going to be in the Museum of Failure in a couple of years. So not only am I wrong because, you know, Apple Watch is a massive success, <laughs> sure. but what happened that I was escorted off the stage. Wow. Um, you got the perp walk, you got the told, perp walk, huh? <laughs> yeah, shit. basically they kicked, they kicked me off stage. Oh, that's rude. And that's rude. They, no, because, well, I, they, and then the, the guy who sort of kicked me out of the conference, he's like, he's like, 
Mr. CEO loves watches and he bought all the managers an Apple Watch for Christmas present. Oh my god. So some so so someone's feelings got hurt is what you're saying. Someone's feelings got hurt and you were the sacrificial lamb. See that's unprof right. that's unprofessional. You you were like Gilbert Gottfried that, up there. That's you're unprofessional. Gilbert Gottfried of like uh, <laughs> That is awesome. All right, so let's do this because cuz our listeners are not going to a lot of our listeners are not going to go to Sweden even though we have listeners in Sweden. I'm so, not going to Sweden. So all right, so the Museum of Failure isn't just in Sweden. So tell us how can we see all the things that you guys have? What kind of things do you guys do so people around the world can see what they're doing? Well, I can correct you first. It's not in it started in Sweden, but it's in Brooklyn, New York. It's just Wait, so I, that's I why he's that in New York just, right now. No. I mean, he's not in New York right now. He's back in Sweden. Yes. I, know, I know that. No, but. I'm I'm in Sweden, but the museum is in in New York. So. Right. So, okay. All right. So I miss. Yeah. I, I completely misunderstood this. So so the whole museum right now is in the Bronx in New York. Is that right? Brooklyn. Yeah. In Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. All right. And but, it's open until mid May or mid June, depending on how things go. So is this the same? Because I was I go to Minnesota every year for Christmas. My my yeah, in laws. Yeah. So it was yeah. in Mall of America two years ago, right? Yeah, it was during it, the Christmas. The same, so, it, is that the yeah, same it's exhibit? Exact, it's it's a little bit bigger in New York, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, everything's bigger in New York. So, yeah. so the okay, so I guess I didn't <laughs> understand this. And more expensive. Yeah, for, for yeah. sure. <laughs> so, so the museum actually moves around. Yeah, so it, it stays about two or three months in each place, uh, and then it moves on to the next place. You know, it oh, was okay. it was here in Chicago oh, like after concept. Minnesota. Wait, no, the, no, no, it was, was it? no, it was planned for Chicago and then it never happened. Oh, cause in Minnesota they had mentioned, cause I, yeah. I, I said I was from Chicago and they had mentioned something that's coming to Chicago and we were joking like, oh, yeah. the museum of failure is following me. I said, <laughs> I said, it's follow me cause I'll be back in Chicago next week. Holy so God. it never came to Chicago. Okay. Now, yeah. I, it'll probably, it'll probably come to Chicago in the near future. Oh, oh, that's what I like to hear. Holy and cow. You guys See, have VIP you guys have VIP thank tickets. You, thank you. Awesome. And thank please you. send me a high resolution photo of each one of you. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay, we're being in, we're being inducted. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I, I I can see this. Wait a minute. This is this is like you guys have VIP passes, and we're gonna have our own wing. The world's the the, no, the actually, fail podcast. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna send you LCD screens and a video, so it's just a nonstop video. We're gonna send you a beta max. Tape. We're send you a, be a beta max tape of us uh, doing our show. So yeah. here's my here's my last question. Max Hedrum. Do, do you have do you have a section of the museum about about uh, things that were destined to be a failure, but actually turned out to be uh, a wild success, just like a small section to kind of counterbalance the failure part. Like, for example, Amazon, book reseller, could have been books a million back in the day. You know, it kind of blended in with all the other companies back in two, early 2000s. Then it just turned into this monstrosity, which is like, you know, beyond everyone's wildest expectations. Do you have a section like that? Or just, you know, to kind of counterbalance the failure aspect of the museum? I mean, there is, there are several sort of examples of products that were, of failures, but then they turned out to be successes. Right. Like the post-it, the post-it note is the most famous example. Okay. I, I, I hate post-it notes. I hate post-it notes. I use them every Love day. Them. I use hate, them every day. Hate them. Yeah. Use them every day though. And yeah. then the other example is Viagra. Do you hate Viagra love, as well? I love yeah. Vi I love Viagra. Yeah. What do you What do you need Viagra? I I I don't need it, Ted. <laughs> oh, you I love it. Oh, you love it. Okay, got it. <laughs> you sprinkle on. You, sprinkle you need on Viagra. Some... You need Viagra when you take a lot of coke. When you snort coke, See? you need okay. Viagra, right? Okay, I, now that I am not. I am neither. I am either confirming or denying my cocaine habit. So wait. So wait. So uh, Viagra. And he, and, he, and he drives a DeLorean. So, too. so people thought Viagra, an, an erectile dysfunction pill that could make anyone anywhere have a hard on was going to be a failure no it wasn't it was a cardiac it was a heart medication yeah. to begin with that's wait, how it started how, how, they, how did, what, I didn't make know that. it to so give they, you a, they wait, actually can i can i do this joke it gave you a heart on <laughs> sorry i had to i had to do that joke i'm sorry that's like a dad joke it's a horrible dude. joke come on wait a minute wait a minute Vi I, I did not know this viagra started as a heart medicine to yeah. do what to your heart <laughs> it's a blood it, make I, it I, happy i don't know exactly <laughs> I don't know exactly. I, I don't know exactly what it did, but the, in the medical trials, uh, the patients who men uh, who had this who had Viagra, they um, they refused to stop taking it, and nobody could figure out. But it, it it's not it's working, but not that good, you know. And then they found out like the reason the men loved to take this pill is because it gave them a heart on, uh, and. <laughs> Then they realize, like, hey, this heart medication is better at 
you know, giving men erections than it is a, as a heart medication. So now we have Viagra. Yeah. Cool. I, I wonder how our, our show is. I wonder if our show meant to be funny. But I wonder if it's if if it has another. It just effect. gives it just gives people hard on. No, no, no. I've never, no, I've never, I've never, ta- I've never, I've never taken Viagra or Cialis or anything like that. But I have read, I have Don't read. Lie, Ted. Listen, Ted, but I, but Ted. I have read. That's I have a failure. Read. Now, this, failure. Now this is the best. This is the best. This is the best marketing thing of all time. I love the part of Viagra where Viagra where it says, if you have an erection that lasts for more than four hours, please seek immediate medical attention. Hey, if you had on for four hours. Why yeah, would you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, you know that was just marketing. That was just marketing. That never happened. I, I, as f- from what I read, yeah. that never happened. They just marketed like that. Okay, so 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 Dr. West. So the the mm. right now the uh, museum is in the Bronx until May. No, for the tenth time, it's Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, Brooklyn yeah. whatever, <laughs> Brooklyn. Okay, it's a borough. Bur- <sighs> whatever. I'll New York is New York is New York. So 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 <laughs> give us the cheat. Where is it going from? When it when it leaves Brooklyn, what's the next stop? I I wish I could tell you, but I don't know. So it's it's gonna be one of the bigger cities because it's it's either gonna be San Francisco, Chicago, DC, uh, maybe Seattle or Austin. If if, if I could, of, one of the bigger. Cities. Do, do you have a website, doctor, mm-hmm. that we can yeah. go to? Like yeah. just yeah, yeah museum, the... museumoffailure Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. 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 So so if I could, if I could just push for Chicago, okay. Yeah. So so I don't know how you know San Francisco works, but it's very expensive. Rosemont. Yeah. No. It's well, very, it's very expensive. <laughs> we just opened in New York, so yeah. but <laughs> and, you know all about expensive. And it's it's got it's just full of homeless people, just full of homeless people. Yeah, okay. No, no, Seattle no. is very rainy. Okay, hmm. Chicago. What's good about Chicago? Tell me. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll tell me. you right now. I, I, yeah. I'll be honest with you. So Chicago has a suburb uh, that is in between Chicago and O'Hare Airport. It's called Rosemont. It's a very small village. Village, Rosemont. Look up Rosemont. Look up some of the things they have in Rosemont. They have conventions. Rosemont. Large convention center, Rosemont yeah. is an incredible uh, story in itself. But they are perfect for you. They will. They will probably. <laughs> they will probably pay you. To have the museum there, <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. That's how. That's I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. they're a convention hub. I mean, everybody goes to Rosemont for different things. They're always looking for stuff. Um, well, look at look at Rosemont. Yeah. It's it's a stone's throw uh, from I, Chicago, and it's next to O'Hare. It's, I mean, if, I mean, honestly, like if if the what I would like most. So okay, let's say we 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 get some uh, some venue in in Chicago, and we, this is a go. Then what I would love to do is to have some Chicago sort of local failures of things, product, uh, services. Uh, the Cubs, ideas, the Sox, no, the not, Bears. That's not sports. Okay, so not, not sports. Not, sports. <laughs> not sports. The, the, bear, the, bear, the Bears draft picks over the last 20 years? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's actually a lot of Chicago uh, uh, failures. A lot of it is um, – K. McNown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's it's so that's easy. Man, that's a really good idea. Can, yeah. Your listeners can. I mean, if if there's any Chicago related failures, I would love to hear. I mean, I'd love yeah. to get those suggestions. Oh yeah, we can. You know what? So that that's a great thing for Let's our listeners it. to come up with. I, like I love that. No, that's cool because then you're you're yeah. getting very you're getting a local vibe and you're 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 you're, you're yeah. touching a nerve. And it's fun. For, I mean, yeah, it's very it's fun. fun. It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can we can absolutely do that. I I think you know what that there's a challenge out to our listeners. Send me as many homegrown Chicago failures, and don't yeah. do sports because no. it's just too easy. Yeah. And then and then I will send them to uh, I will send them to you, and then we can awesome. kind of try to get this thing here because I think it would yeah. be a blast. Yeah, I mean, just just looking at the stuff on the on the website and everything, and going through all these different failures. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know what one of the things I ran across was a Cheeto flavored lip balm. I want you to think about that for a second. Yeah, I just want you to. I mean, I'm addicted. My sister and Sounds I. Sounds yummy. I mean, yeah, we're addicted to, to chapstick, and I know I see people like doing that. But imagine that Ugh. in Cheeto flavor. We I'm, have a, we have the, one of the kids has a lime one at home. It's fucking disgusting. It is. Those, so actually, here's my la- here's the most obvious question. You, I forgot you keep this. saying this. No, this is my last question. Seriously, <laughs> Go, ghost towns. Ghost towns, you know, like for example, they were boom towns at one point. They, they, you, these towns yeah, were built what? up. Like for example, yeah. w- uh, what's the what's the town in um in, in North Dakota with with the fracking? It yeah, built yeah, up, yeah, 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 yeah. And now yeah. and then it went dead because we the fracking went away. Ghost towns. Yeah, that that's a failure. I mean, those There's are failures. Mm-hmm. There are entire cities in, like, I, I read something about a, a cities in somewhere in South America built by Ford or some. Oh yeah, when it, with, when he was developed, when he was uh, harvesting rubber. Yeah, something. Yeah. I, maybe it yeah. wasn't Ford, but it was one of the. Big it was companies. Firestone, like, Firestone, and Ford were. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah, they yeah, were together yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
something like that that would be that would be interesting yeah all right. Wow. I. You know what? I love that we're part of this now. I love that we're doing this. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. We're going to be part of it for forever. <laughs> well, well, no, Ted. So, careful what you wish for. No, we we figured out. Doctor, remember this was his idea. No, not mine. We, <laughs> we figured out potatoes. that there's yeah. We figured out that there's eight billion people on the earth, and there's four <laughs> podcasts for every human yeah. being on the planet. So we can't be in there. Right. I mean, there's we 32 billion yeah, podcasts. Yeah, we, we literally cannot be. Yeah. In there yet. First, you have the top 100 crime crime related podcasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we cannot be in there. All right, so Doctor West, thanks so thank much you for so being much. on. Thank you, thank this you, is, Doctor. This has been absolutely Pleasure. a blast, and uh, we appreciate you doing this. And yeah, I will send you everything that our listeners send us, and hopefully, awesome. uh, very soon we will have a museum of failure right here in Chicago. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so thank much. You, for thank you, thank you so much. Care. Thanks for being All right, on. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Wow. Was, oh, that was great, dude. Is that is that crazy? Does does the concept of that seem absolutely nuts? I mean, I no, it makes perfect sense. I mean, it's part of Americana, or just like I mean, think about it. I mean, think of all the ideas that have been out in the world throughout history, where it's like it, 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 at the time it sounded great, and and like the, the most fascinating part about failure is not not like a spectacular failure, but something that looks like it's it's got all the earmarks. Of, it's going to be successful, and it's even mildly successful at the beginning, and then it just kind of flames out. Where something that looks unpromising at the beginning actually turns out to be a wild success that, that I always thought that was a fascinating concept because you just cannot predict well, how these things are going to go. What the weirdest one was is is that the people who made Segway thought that the world would be on Segways. What? Yeah. Who? who well, I, mean, I mean, is we'll there anything that that is there except for te- I mean, television? Mm-hmm. This lets everybody just sit and do whatever. Yeah. But is the, is there another thing besides? I mean, television, the internet, pornography. I mean, is there another thing that really is going to be that big? Well, well, you know, but think about it. Think about think about you're an executive who's making big money, and you're in a boardroom where everybody's you know it's kind of like it's kind of like being a dictator. Everybody's scared of you, and everyone's kissing your butt, and you're in a boardroom, and you're saying I, this is a good idea, and you got these yes men sitting at your table who have to agree with you or else they're going to get fired. So think about the guys at Zenith and Kodak who've been making TVs and cameras for years and then they just couldn't they couldn't see around the corner and they couldn't see the future and they flamed out. Where look at the lesser companies who just took over. I mean, why isn't Kodak the most successful camera company of all time? They've been doing it for years. Because they didn't want to they didn't want to share I, I well, just they think are six, they are a successful yeah. company. I mean, I just think just I just think of this. Take a run. Yeah, I just think of this. You're you're sitting in a Gerber, you're sitting in a baby food uh, a meeting with all your execs, and somebody yeah. says adult baby food, and then nobody's got the balls. Nobody's got the balls to go. Are are you? Have you eaten this stuff? Yeah, are you no. kidding me? Yeah. So it, it does seem kind of wild, right? But you know what I said about um, things in movies, like uh, Back to the Future. I'll bring it up again. You know, at the opening scene in the first movie when he had the automatic dog feeder. Like, that's, that's a, a thing, thing now. now. That's I know. A thing now. I that know. movie came out in like eighty six or eighty seven. There's all these things in movies that are a thing now. They were they were kind of like uh, fantastical in the movies because the technology wasn't there back in the day, and now they are like legitimate things that are on the market making tons of money. I guess I. You know what? I mean, I know that he could totally open. I know one that here. for. Oh yeah. Oh, he could yeah, have. Sure. He could actually have like something like year round here. Well, see, that's the thing that I didn't understand. I thought. Like it had permanent, I thought there were permanent places, and I didn't then it either, moved yeah. around. Yeah. I did not realize the entire museum moved, moved around, yeah. and it's not in any one place ever for any extended period of time. When we were in Minnesota, they had it in the mall of circus. Yeah, when they had they had it in the mall of America, traveling circus. They explained it to us there too, um, and they were actually a smaller. Um, it was a smaller area, so they didn't have all their stuff. They're like, oh, we have way more than this, but. You know, I can't believe you went to this. This is I really did, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't spend a lot of time in there, but yeah, I did go. I, I loved, I mean, I just love looking at all the stuff online. And then I looked up, you know, when I took that and I took it past that and just, you know, went and looked up failures because I love to do my research for all this stuff. And it was really awesome, man. Well, I mean, if you just look through human history, I mean, it's just fascinating to look at things that people thought were great ideas at the time. And maybe they were good ideas, but like there's so many variations where it's like it's a great idea and they were ahead of their time, but they just couldn't pull it off. Like, like so with, with Kodak, with the, they had the right idea. They were on the right path. They invented, they invented the digital it camera in the 70s. And they're not gajillionaires. I, think, and they I just, really but I they honestly, couldn't pull it off. Ted, I think that my father-in-law had one of those. Yeah. I swear to God, I have to ask my wife. I think we talked about this uh, before. Not my, my well, wife. Well, just and I. think about even on a lesser scale. Just think about. I mean, I know no people are in the museum. You know, individuals. I get it. But think about the per, just the average person who could have bought a couple of rental properties back in the fifties. 
and they'd be long gone by now, but those rental properties would still be in their family for create generational wealth for years. And they just didn't. They didn't have the. Well, they didn't have the on, nerve to pull. Hold on. Think about. Pull the think trigger. about all the people that invested in these things. Yeah. And they failed, and all the money that was lost. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know there's there's money. Crypto. There's what's money what's found. that XFT? That XFT just went bust, and that was like a multi billion dollar yeah, thing. Don't don't get me started on that. Okay. Don't get me started on crypto. I told you it was bullshit. <laughs> I I told you it didn't make sense. But I told people, you it some, had no fucking but, value. But some people well, think it has a lot. Of, some yet. people no, think it has a lot of value. Yeah. Mark, so, Mark, not, Cuban, not Mark, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Here, Mark Cuban thinks it has a lot of value. No, I, I, I agree that that crypto will exist at some point yeah. in the future. Yeah. But the way it's set up now, it the doesn't have any value. Knowledge. Okay, but but, just, we, yeah. but what about yeah. ten years from now? See, that's the thing we don't we don't really yeah. know. I mean, for example, we I think we've talked about this before. So every currency in a hu- in world history has about a hundred year life cycle, and then it doesn't exist anymore. For example, the Roman whatever the Romans had, the Greeks had. Uh, whatever the Zimbabwe dollar, you know uh, the the the. Why are you picking German? things that I don't know anything yeah. so about? So the point is, the German is the mark. Yeah, the, the mark. But <laughs> thank but, you. But the point is, what what's going to happen to the U.S. Boy, dollar you. in a hundred years from now? Is it going to be around? Uh, or is it going to? I, I hope so. I have some of them. Yeah. Or you're going to? Are you going to? Are you going to burn it for for firewood because it's going to be useless because we're printing so much of the, it? The U.S. dollar, our system is very unique though. It's different than anything. Oh, it's else. different. It is. Yeah. So in two hundred years from now, it's going to be here. Uh, whatever. It's already been here for a couple hundred, I think. Yeah, right? How many yeah. Years? I feel like it's it's been around for a while, but no, I understand, but Teddy. Hamilton, yeah. Teddy, I Hamilton. understand exactly okay. what you're saying. Yeah, okay. I understand exactly what you're saying. Right. That you know, I mean, and a lot of these companies, a lot of these things are things that failed originally, mm-hmm. and then people like just like what Mark said, they they took that idea and they they kind of yeah. moved past it and yeah. they they tweaked it, they tweaked it, yeah. it, they they tweaked tweaked it yeah. and, and made it better. And, and maybe it was the right idea, but at the wrong time, or you know, it's you have That's the right. That, yeah, for a lot example, of it like seemed I, like that was a thing. If I took timing, out a cell, if timing, I took yeah. if I took out a cell phone back in 1870, nobody would know what it was because there's no network. It's just it's a cell phone, but it's useless. So without having the Ted, network, how how are you? What? You know what I'm you know what I'm talking about. There's this comedian. <laughs> you know what I mean. There's this comedian that talks about. Let's kind of. I'm like, giving you a very no, no. simple concept yeah. because we're idiots. So to, we need to, to have Ted's very point, simple. To Ted's concepts. point, there's this <laughs> there's this comedian that gets up on stage and he goes, you know, he goes, I'm an idiot. He's like, you know, no, if, he's not. He goes, if I went yeah, if I went back in future, if I went back to the past, if I could travel like and go back to like 1850, and I would say, hey, you know. uh, in the future, we have these things. We have phones everywhere. You can talk on them. And they would just say, really? Well, how's that work? And I'd be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and he would go on naming all these different things. Like, oh, you know, in the future, we have this. And they're like, really? How's that work? He's like, uh, I don't know. So he's like, nobody would believe me because I'm a big idiot. I know we have these things, but I have no idea how anything works. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how a TV works. I don't, the know, concept, how, I don't the, know how a fucking plane flies. Yeah. How does a plane stay Bernoulli, clear? Bernoulli. Bernoulli's principle. That one I do know. I, I taught that to the kids. We yeah, we, we 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 talked about that. Okay, so let's put this thing to bed because man, I have so many ideas that are shitty right now, and I don't want to say any of them, so I don't Dr. end up. Doctor West is going to love you. Yeah, he's he is absolutely good. You know what's funny? Um, so I sent him a thing, and I'm just like, because you know, Doctor Samuel West, and I'm like, and he's he, you know, when we send back things back and forth, he we we every, I, I end up using first names for everybody. Right. And so I said, I said, listen, I go, you're a doctor. I remember we talked about that girl from work who, you know, once she became a doctor and I said, what do you want us to call you? And he's like, well, he goes, I don't care. But the museum people, you know, want Dr. West. So I was yeah. just like, yeah, no, you know, no, no problem. I mean, if someone says, I mean, I don't mind calling someone doctor because they earned it. I mean, they earned it. I mean, to be a doctor is tough. I mean, whether yeah. you're a Ph.D. or an M.D., I mean, you know, you know how hard tough it is to get a Ph.D.? Uh, too hard for me. Yeah, exactly. So, so <laughs> actually, it's funny thing is he's a psychologist and an expert in corporate failure. Nice. He's worked for, <laughs> and he mentioned IKEA. He's worked for IKEA, Volvo, uh, Johnson and Johnson, Deloitte, Deloitte Touche, Deloitte Touche. Yeah, I think I can't remember what yeah. they make, but yeah, yeah. I know. I so heard he's, of them, I mean, he has when he talks about going to these big places, mm-hmm. he has been to tons of gigantic places. People, I mean, but some of them, a lot of them, are, are business calls and not like museum type calls. So is he a consultant? Oh, oh, no, no, no. He's, he's a consultant. He's a consultant. He's a consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a consultant. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He's worked with with tons of companies. I mean, I'm I'm hoping because you know IKEA. I remember IKEA had blow up furniture. I, I'm pretty sure he did <laughs> oh, not I have anything that, to yeah, do yeah. with that. Yeah, he did not have anything to do with that. Okay, <laughs> but let's put this thing to bed. Uh, Teddy, last thoughts. Um, you know, if someone asked me to invest in Apple computers back in the '70s, I would have done it. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have. No, you wouldn't have. You're not that insightful. Okay, I would have bought an Apple. So, instead. so no, but I mean, I mean, if somebody come, if somebody came up to you with a ridiculous concept, Teddy, I've got time travel. Um, I want you to invest in it. You know what you'd say? Absolutely not. 
Yeah, well, I mean, something that's impossible, but you know, I mean, was wasn't at some point wasn't that impossible? I it, mean, wasn't wasn't a computer the concept of having a computer in our pocket yeah. that could get us information? Yeah, any sports question answered, right? Because that's what you yeah. use it for, right? Yeah. Oh, who had the most touchdown? Pa- Bullshit! Yeah. That guy didn't have the most <laughs> touchdown passes. But yeah, I mean, that, it's, that it basically is used to prove all your friends wrong. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fucking. Well, that's well, 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 you know, I, I guess the big the big takeaway is anything's possible. Within reason, so you, you almost have to. Anything's possible. I yeah. mean, you know, if you got if you got money, be, be more open minded, yeah. right? Just be yeah. Open-minded. Instead of yeah. investing yeah. in yeah. AT and T or whatever, yeah. take that money, spread it out over the twenty stupidest concepts yeah. that you could ever find, yeah. and hope that one of them hits a home. Well, well, yeah. What if a hundred dollars in this and you forget about it? And like, it, it, it's like crypto. It's like okay, put a thousand in crypto, forget about it, and in ten years you'll either have one penny or you might have a hundred thousand dollars. You don't really know. Yeah, well, I just think about airplanes. Like I think about airplanes and the concept of being able to fly anywhere, right? And and like bunches of people are going to go to this place. Yeah. They're going to get on these machines. Yeah. They're going to fly in the air all over the place. And this is going to happen in the future. And it, and if you're in the I don't know the nineteen early nineteen well, hundreds, yeah. eight, and you're just like uh, no, I, no, I no, think I'll every, you know, every aviation museum you've ever been to, they show you know the Will, the, the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk with that piece with that with that plane that yeah. they made the death machine, and, yeah, <laughs> and that that flew for thirteen <laughs> seconds. They thought that was and that was the great and that was like the most successful flight ever. I think it, it was airborne for thirteen seconds or like twenty seconds, and yeah. who knew that was going to lead to right, right. This. Yeah. So, so I mean, you yeah. got to kind of do that. But yeah. okay, uh, Mark, last thoughts. Well, first of all, I have a thought on my my you, I were I. I wish we could go back to the day where we settled our disputes um, fighting, like fist fighting, rather than Google. It was funner when you got in an argument with a friend. And you just beat and, the and shit and out of each other? Just, How, about it, it, it has, How about a duel? How about a duel? I'm talking about like friends' <laughs> friends. I'm not talking about something where the police have to be called. But, you know, you'd sit around and you have to, you have to, you have to like, there's a dispute and, and one can't prove the other wrong because we don't have a smartphone next to us. Right. So it had to be settled some way. <laughs> Those are fun times. Um, my just, final thought is just beat them into my submission. Fi- my, my final thought is yeah, yeah. Wh- whoever gets their ass kicked was wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Don't give up. Right. If you have a good idea and it fails, it might lead to somewhere else. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't be afraid to try something. Don't be afraid of failure, because when you fail, that's how you grow. Yeah, I mean, get you in general, step, just get you closer in, to success. Yeah, yeah in anything sure. in life, in mm-hmm. sports, in, in anything in life, it, it's not just inventing and making money. It's not always about that. But don't be afraid to try different things. Um, don't be afraid to fail. No, I, you know what? And, I, and I'll tell you this: all throughout my teaching, the one of the things that I always said to the kids, no matter what age they were, is you learn more from failing mm-hmm. than you do from being successful. Right, because you could dumb luck into anything. I could dumb luck into creating a pen. No pens ever existed, and I just dumb luck into it, and and I don't know how I got there. But failing, I mean, we talk about like the computer. How many iterations of the original computer were there? Two, no, before they came up with an actual working computer. I mean, yeah. think about how many times you had to fail. You had to come to work every day. For how many years? I'm, I'm assuming years, whatever. Yeah. But but say you came to, to work one day every day, three hundred days, and you failed, right? That's got to that's some perseverance right there. You've yeah. got to. I mean, how many times? I mean, think about it. Like when you do something bad, we're playing golf or we're doing whatever, and you fail. You're just like, oh, I suck. No, there is no I suck. It's just like now I got to do something different. Yeah. Where, what different thing can I do? Yeah. I mean, that's got to be the hardest part Are of you it. You telling right? me to quit golf? No, no, no. You suck now. You got to find something to do. No, Just no, play no. Left-handed. no, 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 no. Listen, darts is a really good <laughs> thing you can do, and you can do that drinking. You know too. what? I hate darts. No, no. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm like, how hard is it to come up with a different idea? And yeah. think about all these people that have have failed, right? Yeah. That's cool. Maybe they went on to do other things and stuff. I, I just think yeah. it's such a cool concept. At least they tried, right? Yeah. That that they tried, yeah. right? That that some guy said, uh, "We're a toothpaste company, but we're going to make." Uh, we're going to make dehydrated crab meat yeah. and dehydrated chicken. He is right, though. They missed the boat by, instead of getting angry, they should have embraced it like Ted said. Yeah. They should have like en- embraced it and been like, yeah, dude, that was fucking great. We tried that. We did try and do that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, we embrace, I, I feel like we embrace failure every single day. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I I feel like I'm not doing it. We've been embracing it like 63 times now. We're <laughs> 63 we fucking times. encompass it, man. <laughs> we, 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 embo- we embody it. <laughs> we embody it. We, we slathered ourselves in failure. 
Listen, I, 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 I this, this is what I guarantee, and, and not in a bad way, but when this thing comes to Chicago, you're going to see the real three idiots, banners, and signs <laughs> yeah. all over this place, man, because we're going to be kind of- Rosemont is yeah. fucking Rosemont. Would, oh, my God. Yeah. But listen, uh, so I'll say this. A um, couple things. Number one, if you have a, a Chicago failure, please send it to us. Get it on Instagram. Uh, uh, TikTok, we're there. You can email it to us. Okay, send us your the failure so I can send it to him uh, for next week. This is pretty interesting, Mark. You are out of town, correct? Yes, Nebraska again. I'm not saying. Are you okay? So, saying. so you got a pretty serious thing going on with uh, with. Uh, I'm just. I'm whatever. Okay. Um, you know there are female oh, Sasquatch. Mo- Mo- Moab, Utah. <laughs> I, think, I, think he's going to Mo- I think he's going to Moab, Utah. Hot, hot ass Red female Rocks. Sasquatch. Red Rocks. So this is pretty exciting. If you tune in next week, you are going to hear Stan from the original uh, uh, deleted that you never heard, I guess, unless you were there really early. The deleted first episode. Stan, Stan is, is Stan is going to be on to take your place while you are in whatever doing whatever you would. Whatever kind of sick shit you Let, do to a female. Let's hope you don't get Wally pipped, okay? Let's so, you have a spot yeah. when you come back, all right? <laughs> I, I, well, you know what? we got to teach Stan to talk into the microphone. Oh, that's so true, I think yeah. that's going to take 10 or 15 minutes. Never right mind, there. yeah. So, you'll, yeah. You'll be back. <laughs> yeah, so, so the annoying part will be there. All right, listen, man, uh, we had a great time. Oh, you're going to have a new listener wherever where, where, where I go. I'm going to tune in. It's going to pop up on the... Oh, and there... Okay, you know what? We haven't... Oh man, you got to go to a city. Idaho. You got to go to a state that we. Yeah, Idaho. Washington State. No, no, Washington State. Oh, uh, I think Idaho. The only two states. You know I'll, do? I'll, I'll Idaho, listen on. Montana. I'll listen on the plane, and then it'll just bing to every state I go through. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. And and we are up to. And you guys, you guys heard this. I think twelve. No, thirteen. We hit thirteen. I didn't tell you guys. Thirteen different. Um, we are at twelve. Thirteen different African countries. Have listened to this show. Nice. Holy shit! Just African countries. I Just like that. African countries. Yeah, but we are not in the Congo. So if you're going to the Congo, yeah. download us there. Thank stream you. us there. Thank It'd you, be Afri- great. Thank you, Africa. Yeah, I, dude, I love every second yeah. of it. Oh, and we got a, one of the people are doing it. They're doing a deep dive. Somebody, one of the one of the, our, our future uh, lists, one of our future guests. She goes, "I'm doing a deep dive." I think she listened to forty or fifty different shows. Wow. Yeah, because I get I get all that info. Right in the UK, they're in the UK. It's pretty interesting. I'm not going to say anything yet, but it's it, it's going to be real interesting. Oh, that's yeah, scary. Yeah, so she went she went real deep. So <laughs> I'm assuming she she probably won't be a guest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, when you go too deep, I, I, I had some bad nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, Teddy, we all we, we all had some bad nights. All right, all right. listen up. Uh, enjoy it. Uh, we'll have Stan on next week. Mark will take a a, a week off, and uh, we got some really cool stuff coming up. And uh, enjoy. And oh, I'll uh, do a song. I'll, I'll call a song in though. I'll record a song for you. Oh hell yes! So I'll record it and then you could play it. Okay, but I can't edit, so you don't have to edit. You oh, just, just play it on my phone. Just play it on your to the mic. Okay, oh, yeah, step just, to the mic and the mic no fagin. Just put okay. it. Yeah, whatever, man. All right, cool. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy. <laughs>